<clears throat> All right. All right. This is the latest PBS po PBF. Can I even say it? I said <laughs> test. Hey, man, my mouth is PBF. so twisted uh... this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Made possible by viewers like you. <laughs> thank you for listening to uh, morning air whatever it is what is that that morning thing they do on npr never doesn't matter uh yeah. where we manipulate you by talking like this um so we haven't broadcast in a while um i think it's largely on me i've been kind of sidetracked with some things and stuff like that i know docs wanted to do some stuff and I think um, in a lot of my own kind of spiritual search and things like that, um, I know that it's important because we have so many questions from people at times. Um, I know Doc and I do, and we often, I don't know, you know, it's, it's my own kind of nervousness as like, I'm not a, I'm not a priest, you know? And so for me to like try to take a role out here, so I always like to say that I'm not a priest. So everything that I'm saying is me uh, with the blessings of my priest father turbo to be doing these things but at the same time too don't take it as if i'm uh guiding people spiritually and that's what's held me back but at the same time too it's also important to reach out and you know just try to get people in touch with christ in the real church and so today uh we've got slade uh known as slade raider um across social media He's going to be joining us. He's an Orthodox catechumen. And so we're going to be diving into, you know, what his background a bit and then kind of what brought him to Orthodoxy and understanding that journey a bit. So welcome to the show, Slade. Hey, thanks, brother. Um, yeah, background. I joined the Navy when I was 18 years old, um, but I grew up, uh, you know, spiritually, I grew up in a very like uh non-denom protestant church to the point where like my stepdad played drums in the band and all that stuff <laughs> um yeah like one of those places and you know it's like you want to believe but it's just so spiritually dead and it's only like it only exists for that hour hour and a half that you're actually in those those walls of that place i think um because there's no actual framework for living or anything like that but yeah i joined the navy 18 and went to a school went to buds did the whole thing um, now what what was your rating what'd you go to a school for ht your your whole tech uh yeah turd chaser <laughs> but you know thank thank god i never had to uh, go to the fleet and do that right it was just this the quickest source rating out of town because back could in you, the day could you explain for, to people what an ht is just because they may not know that are listening <laughs> Uh, yeah, so a whole maintenance technician. So you spend like 13 weeks in this school learning how to weld. But then I guess when you get to the fleet, you're just straight up like a plumber, hand down the toilets kind of thing, <laughs> unclogging the shipboard toilets. But um, yeah, thankfully, I, I didn't have to do that job. I just went to the school and then went to Bud's after that and made it through with my original class. Didn't get any rollbacks or anything like that. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's like when you look back and reflect on things, you're like all these little tiny things that add up to get you to wherever you are in the present moment. And it's just like, how did all that even happen? Um, but now, uh, yeah. could I ask real quick? I'm sorry to interrupt, man. Forgive yeah, me. no. I do that a lot of times, so I'll try to be better. I try to act like Father Turbo on the Royal Bath. Forgive me. Forgive me. You'll hear that a lot of times. They're like, I'm going to interrupt you. Forgive me. But, um, <laughs> but um, now, because it sounds like you said when you turned 18, you went to Bud's. Like this was something you wanted to do. Like this was this wasn't like like, hey, I'm done. Am I gonna go join the Navy? Like you planned yeah. on doing this. This was a goal. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, I, I think like most young boys growing up, um, there's that weird like uh I don't know, like playing army, playing playing whatever right growing up and i would i would play marine snipers when we were kids we didn't know anything better and my biological father he was a you know a battalion recon marine back way in the day dude like my dad was born in 45 and he was 17 okay. marines and he was like f the marines <laughs> you don't want to do that he ended up um cross 
crossing over from the Marines into the army and was a door gunner in Vietnam. And then anytime like that would ever come up, my dad would be like, Oh dude, you don't want to do anything. If you're going to join the military, you want to be a Navy SEAL. Those guys did whatever they wanted and they got, they got to do all the cool stuff. And uh, so immediately, like as a, you know, 10 year old, I'm buying all the, like the Vietnam seal books and reading the LERP books and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, so I got like way into it. And then um, of course, 9-11 happened and I was like, oh dude, I'm, I'm joining the military for sure. <laughs> you know, um, that massive deception but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so <clears throat> six days after I turned 18 I, I joined the Navy and um, you know I was in that depth program for about six months before I shipped I actually went to boot camp the day the Iraq war started like March 19 2003 and then um, yeah went straight like Navy boot camp which was like uh, a shocker it was just like hey let's learn how to fold clothes and how to clean yourself <laughs> and it was like <laughs> it's so weird dude and then like I, it really know, is growing, growing up between like hawaii and like the pacific northwest i ne and whatever this is not racist to say this at all i'd never seen so many black people before you know and i was like what okay cool so this is just like just everybody hanging out folding clothes and and <laughs> <laughs> there's people how to wash their nuts because like apparently dudes don't wash themselves and then I, was, I cannot wait to get out of here like um went to a school and then you know you're doing those little seal pts at like 3 45 in the morning throughout the week before a school starts did that crap um went to buds um got uh i was in like class 250 got paired up with my, my swim buddy was mikey monsoor um mm yeah and I, oh, um, he, do you want to give a little background on mike Mansoor? um yeah yeah um so whenever I, you know when i heard what happened to him because we were on like the same deployment just in different spots he was at a different team he was a west coast guy i was an east coast guy but our team three and teammate were like on the same cycle but uh when i heard what he had done i was like oh that's that's typical mikey like just always down for the boys doesn't matter what happens to him he'll step in he would step in front of any anything coming at you um and he would take take the heat for you he, like he would just do whatever for you but uh yeah mikey got killed uh, september 29th 2006 in iraq on his first deployment um and that was like it was a big shock because he volunteered to stay behind on deployment for like the turnover stuff with the next mm -hmm. incoming team and so he should have been home already when he got killed but you know typical mikey just raising his hand for everything and uh you know they're in a sniper op um up on a roof daytime stuff in ramadi ramadi i guess was pretty hot then um we were in baghdad but is from my and they're doing like daytime stuff which is typically a no-go because like just because you're a seal doesn't mean you've got special powers um we typically use nighttime and you know just normal commando rules to do things but those guys were doing daytime stuff for whatever reason and uh they had a, a grenade go up like two or three stories i can't remember the the height of the building so that thing was already cooked by the time it came up it literally hit him in his chest fell at his feet and instead of trying to like sweep it away or try to throw it because he knew it was probably about to debt he just said grenade covered it up and took the blast because he had you know he's tight quarters and a sniper op with the other guys peppered some other dudes broke broke some legs on the other guys but he uh he ate that grenade and uh, ended up dying and memory eternal. yeah memory eternal for mikey yeah and uh you know he's posthumously got the uh the medal of honor for that um but like even leading up to that like he saved another dude like he had i don't know if you know what a psc5 delta is like this big heavy multi-band sat radios it's like the comms guy radio the big man pack radio so they like since he was a new guy and he wouldn't say no to anything like he was he was the comms guy slash a 48 gunner which is like uh, you know the 762 mm -hmm. machine gun not not a light setup for anybody, especially with like old school plates and all that stuff. 
Um, it's gotta be like 150, 200 pounds, right? Dude, he was carrying, yeah, between ammo weight, weapon weight, armor, um, the Pisky Five, other things like that. Like he was, he was heavy, heavily laden, to say the least. And uh, another buddy, uh, actually a, another dude from Hawaii, uh, Justin Cowie, ended up getting shot, like crossing a road in a patrol, and he was shot through like the hip all the way down his femur and blew out his knee. And so he's like, you know, crippled in the middle of the road and there's rounds mm -hmm. just peppering all around him. Mikey, like with one hand, tucks the 48 and starts spraying towards the contact, runs in the middle of the street, grabs Cali, picks him up and drags him back to cover. Um, and that was like, you know, beginning towards the middle of that deployment. And so like total disregard for his own life constantly. If he sees somebody in trouble, he's he's going after him. Can but I yes. Forgive me, man. Did uh, yeah. with that being your best friend and him having gone through that, how did that affect your outlook? Did it in any way, like? Yeah. Um, so, like, and, 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 and if I'm digging too much here, man, yeah, no, no, no. you don't have to. I, I mean, I don't. Oh, good. That was just like you know that was the beginning of multi multiples of instances like that of losing people that you care about, but. Um, he uh it, i mean dude i was like 20 21 years old when that happened <laughs> you know yeah. and um when you're going through buds and all that stuff dude you feel like so invincible right like when you make it through you, you try it and you're a team you're like yeah we don't ever you know our kill death ratio is like nobody ever gets killed whatever right like it's just the naivety of it all um and then having that just slap you in the face is just like super sobering, um, shocking, heartbreaking. And it's something that like my first son, his name is Michael Mansoor. Um, but it's like something that, um, it stays with you constantly. And obviously like that initial shock wears off. And then it's just like the stages of, of grief are coming through and you're like, dude, what? Like, you, yeah. sometimes when it happens and it's so sudden like that, you just, you're like have a thought of like oh i can't oh yeah no he's not there yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah and then it's like anger and then uh yeah it it is it's uh it's just heartbreaking when things like that happen and then um you know typical typical military typical team guy response is like oh booze will make this stuff better <laughs> yeah 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 been there and i know even me sometimes too dude if i can and doc please jump in too as yeah. well because i know you've been there man but there's guys numbers i've got in my phone that i've not gotten rid of like i can't delete their phone number do you know Same. what i mean you know yeah. and it's weird too sometimes because like what will happen to me because i don't know if you're on telegram i'm a telegram and sometimes all of a sudden that's what's wild it, and that's what's made me question because i'll get a notification that this person's on telegram and i'm like oh you know, because somebody else got that number now. You know what right. I mean? And it's just that yeah. that weird sort of thing like that. You know, and obviously too, man. Because you know, speaking about the booze, man. You know, I I uh, I danced quite a bit with that at times, and there's there's so mm -hmm. many times too. You know, like just grab a bottle, let's let's go, and you know, let's let's remember them and and, and things like that. And um, you know, how did that uh, how did that kind of play out then for you with that? Oh, you know, it's like that, just, that, that happened. It was our first deployment and, um, it was just like, okay, well, Charlie, Mike will continue mission. And, uh, you just, I don't know, man, it, it seems like a world away from me now at this point, I've only been out for four years, I think. Yeah. Four years or five years now, it'll be five years in March, I think. But, um, it seems like, such a lifetime ago all of this like even uh yeah yeah um it's, i've had such a departure from any of that thinking even um in the way that we live our lives now but you know it's like what what are you going to do now at this point obviously it's a dangerous occupation and that was like that first first indoctrination into how dangerous it actually is and um 
it let you know that okay well the longer i do this the the more you're kind of rolling the dice either for yourself or you know losing other people that you care about which um that started to pick up you know middle towards the end of my career um where it continued to kind of stack up um and i don't know it it becomes difficult to um try to separate those things right like compartmentalize work from home from life from uh like grieving things and then it all just kind of comes to be like one big blur as far as like oh yeah well when we're not working you can you can like drink or whatever <laughs> you know yeah 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 and that's a lot of that yeah or sometimes even yeah. it'll lead to drinking at work and yeah that's actually a good other point about compartmentalizing everything it's just like it, it gets so tough because all these things is like well i don't want to deploy because i know my boys don't want to die but then there's also that uh dichotomy of like well if i don't deploy then i'm like a bitch or whatever you know what i mean and it's like you you get into this weird in between dialectics of that and yeah i got caught and stuff like that as well it's like i want to keep deploying but i know the cost of what it's doing to me mentally emotionally spiritually and to my family and friends so it's like this weird like push and pull and then the only legal thing that you can technically kind of do is like drink alcohol so then that becomes an over glorification of it and then it's your only escape and then even for me being christian and protestant during that time it's like when you don't have like an actual basis to set like a good uh that foundation then everything completely shakes when things like this happen when you start losing friends on deployment you don't save a patient like these things completely that's what happened to me i lost a few people more in iraq like working with um uh, like the surgical teams and that for me was just it like it shook me like you said yeah it's like oh my, like man like what is actually really going on and the more you do it it's just like okay where's the what is the end like what happens like what's gonna happen and yeah you roll the dice every time and then you do a different type of deployment it's just like yeah this sucks i'd rather be back into a combat deployment than a ship deployment but then it's just like there's still that that thought back there it's like man hey we're rolling the dice again and it's just like what what is this all for and then you lose that meaning and without that foundation that for me just it, it almost completely ruined my life and just uh and everyone around me because then it, it starts poisoning you the alcoholism the effects of war and then when you come to realize it's like yeah we've been duped and we've been used for all these things that mm -hmm. and it's like and then you struggle with that on top of it. It's just like, man, like I really fell for the meme. Like I just, I'm a, I'm a tool for like the bankers and for like the global elite and for their like, for the military industrial complex. And then it's just like, man, like, like, like what is there? To, where do I go from here? Where do I go? Like, and it's hard to kind of keep like not like dropping into this whole nihilism. Just like, well, it's worthless. So it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go out with a bang it's what everyone wants and it's what everyone's kind of feeling so yeah i definitely understand that it's uh <laughs> it's tough yeah there's a there's something to be said about like um yeah protestantism doesn't prepare you for like actual <clears throat> suffering <laughs> it doesn't prepare you for traumas in your life for suffering or anything it's like it's just prosperity gospel right um and it's uh it's not well from my experience it's not real um I, you know it's not i can't say that for everybody but from my experience it's not real um and yeah it just allows well he, here's what i can say for that you know as far as that goes is like you have the mindset like well i'm saved well if you say if you're saved you've arrived so what else is there right mm -hmm. like now we're just kind of floating till we die because I'm already saved. Um, I don't know. But there is no framework for, like you said, suffering, for traumas, for um, the reality of living in this creative world and the results and, and, and outcomes of different events in your life. Like, it doesn't give you any preparation for that. But, yeah, you know, I continued on, teammate, got, um, got married, like, when I was 22. And then, uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's your current wife. You guys yeah. are still, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 
I mean, especially yeah. too, like to be with the teams as long as you did and to maintain your marriage, like, because isn't there some crazy in the special operations community divorce rate of like 95% or something like it, that? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not like everything was smooth sailing, right? Like, oh, no. it's, I was gone, you know, when I, when I got to the, the final command I was at, like the screening command, it was, I was gone like 300 days out of the year close to, you know, so it's, yeah. uh, it, it adds up. Right. But yeah, like what you were saying, even on that first deployment, coming to the realization of like, okay, what are we even doing in Iraq? Um, I thought these bad guys, bad guys, air quotes, <laughs> um, were in Afghanistan and did all this stuff. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's like uh, doing all that training. It'd be like if you're, I'll just use some sports ball examples, I guess. But if you're like uh, um, on an NFL team, right? Like you wouldn't want to sit on the bench. You want to go out and play. Yeah. So um, again, super naive mindset, but you know, that's what you train to do. That's what you want to do. That's what the boys are doing. And like, you actually like are mind tricked into wanting to do these things but yeah. even looking around there on biop you're like okay Halliburton and everything they're spending a billion dollars a day on this war right now at the height of it where we were there yeah like where does this money go and then so disillusioned by the time i'm like on my eighth deployment at the last command i was like dude what are we even doing like they yeah. they definitely don't want us to win this thing um yeah. And then, like, you know, some of the older guys even were like, bro, come on. <laughs> War makes money. We all know this. Yeah. And we are a commodity. Yep. We are this economy. So, you know. Kinda, uh, forgive me. Kind of helps us, too, to understand why there's the continued investment in places like Ukraine and places like that as well. I mean, along with many other factors as well. But, you know, it's, it's about... <laughs> Would our beloved uh, representatives and their friends have money invested in, and Correct. they're going to keep they're going to keep directing money in those directions wherever, however they can, you know. And the the human life means nothing to them, no matter what they say. That's just the cost of doing business, man. Like yeah. human souls in the military industrial complex. Like once we've had the you know the banking systems that we all know and don't love um human souls have become like just currency right it's yeah, like currency. you gotta, gotta spend money to make money well, yep. <laughs> scare yeah, money don't is. make money bro come on <laughs> you want to make this fiat you gotta you gotta feed the souls yep uh, mm. to, the, to the beast that they're worshiping but Dude, it, it's it's so much war pigs like it, it it is so much that song black sabbath man you know and uh i can't wait for their day of judgment Honestly, you know, that's yeah. that that's the thing too, because you know, um I have spent uh many times in confession talking about just the anger that I have towards a lot of what's happened, you know, and just trying to resolve that and just, you know, trying especially, you know, when you fully understand what it is and you fully come to, to Christ and God, you know, you 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 see like it's not as if, hey, we we didn't see some of the things before, but I think the matrix or whatever it is the reality of what it is becomes so much clearer and you understand you know with the pr principalities and the powers out there how much even more of a tool because like those representatives and those bankers are tools of what's up here you know and it just descends down but definitely the the puppet strings hitting us and you know the 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 thing of like well wouldn't it be nice to kind of shake those strings sometimes you know like stir things up you know but it's like yeah, I I, don't, I shouldn't say too much more, but <laughs> you know, uh, it's uh, it, it it's so crazy, and I know for myself as well. There's so many times where I chose to try not to face up to the reality of it. Like I could feel it there because I was like a punk rock kid growing up and everything like that, you know, and listening to a lot of the bands, and you know, like I I, I felt a lot of that, but there was a part of me that just wanted to have the um, the patriotism you know, at that level, but that was, and, and I'm not saying patriotism is wrong, but the way that it's been exploited in order to just spread death and destruction and what it's done to, what it's done to all of us, you know, and, but at the same time too, I, I, I'm really glad because to the nihilism point, 
I, I'm glad that I have Christ now because it helps me to understand so much more. Because I think that was part of my challenge too, is because I couldn't understand why it was happening ultimately. And I did push much more to the realm of, well, what does it matter? You know, let's just keep pushing and whatever. Dude, that's like uh, almost parallel to the way that got me to where I am right now was, um, well, same dude, I grew up like punk rock, metal, like loving that stuff. And, um, but spiritually to where like, finding orthodoxy it was like this circuitous route dude like yeah it was it was just like okay why is everything the way it is yeah and then it was like, let's go down the let's just go down the rationalistic conspiracy realm mm -hmm. right and it's like okay but why right it's it's like these people already have all the money in the world they already have all the power right like how much more does it even matter like what's another billion dollars to these people well, then you realize, okay, it's not just the money, it's power and control, but why, why do these certain groups of people have so much power and control? Like it's gotta be something beyond just the world. Right. And then here's, here's the weird thing, right? So, okay. So what got me onto like the spiritual side of things, um, you know, and God works in multiple ways right as long as you keep seeking him i think that you will eventually find him and it's a weird route that got me to like actually believing in the the noetic spiritual realm uh, uh, you know with the the advent of all the the healing modalities of psychedelics right so there's all these organizations popping up they're like hey we're going to heal special operations vets we're going to heal combat vets through um psychedelics and so like for the longest time, like, you know, I've got guys telling me like, dude, you got to go do this. And I'm like a little freaked out about it. No, nah, I really don't want to do that. Um, and then finally, it just got to the point where I like, I had so much going on in my head. I just couldn't, um, you know, I couldn't, uh, I was like, okay, I got to do something because something has to change. And everybody's saying this is like some miracle, right? And so I go, and I do like the, the Ibogaine and the 5-MeO-DMT thing. And um, Ibogaine was terrible. I don't know why people even like that stuff, but it was and terrible. That's really long experience too, the Ibogaine, isn't it? Like, it's not yeah. like mushrooms where it's a few hours. It's like a day or something, right? It's It's like hours on end. And like the after effects are just like weird too. But, you know, people are like, dude, I'm like, I'm seeing this and you know after they're talking about their experience and i'm like dude i all i felt was um i didn't see anything outside of just like blackness and just like red and this nasty buzzing sound and just felt pain for like 10 hours straight that's miserable man because like <laughs> i know nah. i know some of the experiences that i had you know i'm going into some of the realms man and stuff like that and whether it's good or bad, I think I'd done way too much of it. So for the most part, I knew it was going to end, but I never had something like what you've experienced there because that would be so just devastating just to feel that, you know? And, and, and then you said too, there's the after effects too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like on this, you know, retreat for special operations guys. And I'm like talking to one of the like the coach and dude, it's so weird. It's like this weird new age shamanistic approach to things. And it's gross. Like obviously looking back, I'm like, Oh, Oh, ew, shake that off. Gross. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I rebuke all of this. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know, I'm like talking to this, this coach and she's like, maybe you just needed to feel that pain. I'm like, no, I get it. Like I, I, put down a lot of things as far as like dealing with it you know um but knowing what i know now i'm just like ew it's gross um and then you know did the five thing and uh that's the toad venom uh, yeah yeah the, the bufo toad. Yeah, yeah. just like it's weird bro like i i did that myself so i'm familiar with that you know yeah and and I know for me too, what was crazy about that too was just how quickly it hits too as well. And like, and, and 
honestly, if I can say something about that too as well, I feel like I ended up like in the toll houses or something for a little bit. I talked to Father Turbo and he told me, he's like, you should just forget what happened, but I'll, since we're discussing this right now, I'll, I'll bring that up. But I remember like I was in a weird place and it was like I was stuck in this room and there was these horns going off. And somebody that I was with that I was doing it with had told me that you feel love there. But when I was there, it felt like false love. Do you know what I mean? It was like a blanket of love, but it felt like a smothering blanket of love, like um, like the, the woman in misery. You know, like, like <laughs> glad getting ready to break my ankles if I do something wrong. <laughs> to keep you there. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'll, dude, I'll tell you, like, so um, the whole five thing was weird because they like separate you out and they only let one person go up at a time. And they've got like the doctor there and then they've got all these like space holders to hold the container and, you know, to make sure it's set. Uh, dude, I just hate all of that stuff as far as this new age thing goes. It's such a deception. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they, they promise healing, dude. And now to this point, they don't even call the medicine, and I air quote medicine, they don't even call those drugs what they are. They call it like the bliss molecule, like this organization. Really? It's so gross, bro. Um, yeah, all the people involved in it, like it's just a money wash for them. And it's just it's just prelist on prelist on prelist. And it's just repeat clientele constantly. Um, and it's, I don't know. But anyway, so I... I go up and they're like, all right, here's your little handshake dose. It's a little bit lower and okay. You know, starts shaking. Right. And then, um, I ended up having to go like five rounds of this to get to where, you know, you got to the breakthrough of, um, whatever, but like those first four rounds leading up into that fifth one, I literally was screaming like, you know, I'm blank. I'm whited out at this point. Right. This is what they're telling me. And, I'm like, you're puking, you're crying, and you're like thrashing. I was trying to bash my brains out, screaming, I effing hate you, talking about myself, right? Like on this. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's so this is, uh, you know, not safe stuff, even though they try to tell you it is, um, to the point where they're like, they're having to like follow me around. I, you know, you start on a mattress and then I'm in a different spot every single time I, I come out of it in the room, right? Um, and screaming I effing hate you and like trying to bash my own head in on the the tile floor and then they're like do you want to go again? like the doctor's looking at me like all wide-eyed like hey do you want to go again I'm like yeah I feel terrible uh this is supposed to be good right and then finally like on the fifth one it's like boom blast off and it's just this white warm light and you're like oh this is God right hmm. uh and that's where I was like, okay. And then I'm like coming out of it. I love you. I love you. I love you. So this is what they're telling me I'm saying. So everything looks different after that for a little bit. You know, the effects of this drug are going on for a little while, but I'll tell you like 30 to 45 days out, dude, I was the lowest I've ever been in my life. Um, really? Yeah. Like, and that got me way into like the Gnosticism and just looking for God, right? Like looking for God, but without Christ, because you're like, oh, well, Christ, maybe he was just like some guru kind of guy, right? And this is what mm -hmm. this meditation, dude, like I'm telling you, I was like, okay, well, I experienced God. Again, I'm caveating that with this is my thought process at the time. I know it was false light um, because that's what, right? Like. Satan's an imitator of Christ. He can never do anything God can actually do. All he can do is imitate and give you false light, false hope, give you a false summit, make you think that you've arrived, right? And so that 30 to 45 days, I'm just like so low. Like, what is the point? Like, literally, these are the thoughts 24 hours a, a day in my head. It was like, okay, what's the point if all of fake, right? Like that was, so that's where it put me. And so I'm like reading these books on, um, what is it this lady that was doing um like past life regression hypnosis stuff and talking about like reincarnation and all these other things and I'm like nope like that's not it right I so I put that down I was like okay this doesn't seem right either like something inside was telling me like that was false at least thank god but then it's like getting into some of the you know like the hermetic stuff and some mm -hmm. of the 
the occult side of things of like, oh no, if you just focus hard enough and you gain enough knowledge, then you can, you know, you can reach God. But then you're like, man, this is like, this doesn't feel right either. Um, but it's like you, you feel like you're doing the right things because you're seeking after God, but it is, it's all without Christ. It's mm -hmm. the only Christ is mentioned when it's like, he's a good teacher or like Christ like consciousness. And we're supposed to love everyone, which yes, we are, but not mm -hmm. in that, right? Like we're not all just one connected consciousness. It's not just one sea of everything is, is disconnected. The only way it's connected is we're all created. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the truth. But at the time it's like, it puts you in a such deception going into the psychedelic noetic realm like that. Um, because we're not like you as just a, a rando person, you weren't prepared for that. And that is a realm of, uh, you know, demons. That's a realm of angels. But, you know, I, I would say that um, mostly demons, right? With, our, with the understanding I have now of, you know, the prince of this world, the prince of the air, mm -hmm. um, and fallen ones that, like, this is their domain. And it's the space that they occupy in order to influence us as humans. And... Uh, yeah, it just put me into such prowess for so long. And I was like, okay. Well, you know what, maybe really quick too. just, um, there may be some people listening that don't know what prowess is. Um, so it's thank God for orthodoxy, giving me this type of understanding. Um, prowess is uh, the best way I can describe it is just spiritual deception, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so, um, that can mean multitudes of things, but for the most part, it, it makes you, it makes you believe that spiritually you are correct and that there is that. And the truth of it is, is you've, you've been greatly deceived. Yeah. So I think one of the best stories too, of that is uh, St. Nasidus mm -hmm. of uh, Kiev. Uh, that's one of my favorite ones. Um, Same. He was a, uh, a monk who um, he was, I guess for less better words, he was a talented monk and he was on a, on a great path and um, he wanted to um, basically, I'm sorry. Become a hermit. Yep. Yeah. 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 Become a hermit. A hermit right? Yes. 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 He wanted to become a hermit. And so he had gone to um, the abbot and asked to do that. And he was like, no, you know, you're young still, you know, you need to, you need to spend more time here and, and, and get to this point. And um, he was sitting in his room praying and um, all of a sudden an angel or what he thought was an angel appeared to him. And um, remember, folks, if an angel appears to you, um, cross yourself and ask the angel to cross <laughs> themselves because <laughs> that's something the demons can't do. So just a, a, a pro tip there. or I don't know if it's a pro tip. It's a tip that pros have told me. I'm not the pro that's uh, coming with that information. But nevertheless, so uh, the 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 so-called angel appeared to him because uh, what is it? Even uh, they can appear as angels of light, right? The demons can, and so um, and just told him like, "Hey, go ahead and just do your thing here. You go ahead and read, and I'm going to pray for you." And eventually, and I'm hopefully not butchering it too much. So if you guys know something and I'm saying it he wrong, told him, he told him, "Don't read the gospel. Stay in the Old Testament." And, and, and that was what was interesting, too, because yeah. uh, when he was speaking to people, um, he could only quote from the Old Testament. He couldn't quote from the New Testament as well, yeah. which is kind of odd. Like, why would they only want you to focus on the Old Testament? Hmm. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I wonder if it was a, uh, a yeah. Maserati text story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's what gave him away, too, because the abbot eventually heard that there was some uh, great hermit that was like doing prophesying out and all these people are seeing well, but able, then yeah he and would come uh, to him too because he was mm -hmm. able to actually do um certain healing. things yeah and, he, gave, and, he gave him spiritual gifts he was able to uh tell people some of their future he was able to find things that people had lost he yeah. was able yeah like he it gave him a lot of the spiritual gifts but that's just deception right like that's yeah, because even the demons know where things are lost. And it's like, it's not that they're telling the future the best way of analogy. It's like, if you have someone who has an information that you don't, and it's like, if there's an upcoming army that's heading your way, but you have a scout, 
and then they come and they tell you and you prepare for that it's like how did you know we were coming can you tell the future it's like no they can travel faster and see things way better yeah. than we can so when we hear these little things of like oh he was prophesying telling the future it's like no 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 demons just understand that realm of what's happening in the world better than we do so when they whisper things like that it seems prophetic but then they're also simultaneously moving things in that way as well and setting up those moves to have those people like used and i know because i've been there myself funny enough that we're talking about pre lest because uh the noetic realm like i came into some experience uh before the navy and uh doing shrooms uh high doses of acid and i didn't and i didn't re and i had some experience with like some christian protestant upbringing and like i grew up pentecostal as well so i had firsthand experience Funny enough that we're talking about Father Sarah from Rose, like, or Saint Sarah from Rose, but because I had that experience with like Pentecostalism and like those really weird, like, just well, you know, it's like when you really look at it down to satanic, but like seeing kind of this weird spiritual, mystical, like, aspect of Christianity that, like, I've heard somebody, the people say it before, like, you don't see it any in other Protestant kind of sects, but as I like, uh, I, I had been doing like acid for quite some time and then one night like um it was like a very vivid dream but it's like you don't understand what is kind of happening but you know that it's something real and then uh, I've said it with like DPH when we did that podcast with him where it's like I was in a house with friends but it's like it's dark outside and you can't see anything and it's just like you do you feel safe but you don't and then they're like dude don't go out there there's something out there gonna get you and then I step out and it's like in a movie and it's like, you, I'm, in, I'm in this porch, but I can't see anything past the outside and it's completely dark. And I'm like, what is, ha like, like what is happening? And then I just feel this presence come up really close to my face. And then they're like, yeah, I'm gonna take all your friends. And then I woke up and like I was holding something and like this cold like vanishes and that, that should have been like my warning. But I continued still doing drugs and doing all these things. And then eventually it got to a point where like, uh, you know, I thought I could tell the future or like kind of read people. And sometimes I could and people would be surprised and they're like, wait, how did you know that? I'm like, I don't know. And now realizing it's like I was like that was my warning of like the small amount of like christianity or like christ that i had in me was trying to like tell me like bro don't go down this path don't do it <laughs> but then eventually yeah, yeah it, it leads you and you think that it's like oh no i could do it like it gives you this false sense of like <clears throat> knowledge of like you think you know something but it's that deception of the the culture and then the drugs on top of it that it's like you think it's opening your mind and opening and it is but you're also opening it up to other things that you're really not aware that we're not aware of and like the great ascetics always say like even uh for me being part of a different uh new calendar please forgive me uh, <laughs> uh Wrong calendar. Saint, yeah saint anthony we just uh we're reading about saint anthony and just the battles that he went through is just like like we really we're re dealing with an enemy that has been in warfare for thousands of years and we th we're so oh. deluded that we think that yeah. we can go toe to toe and we can handle it it's just it's and that's where that concept well, of pre less is so beautiful because it's like we we don't know what we're messing with and if we don't have like christ truly for who he is we're gonna get lost and pulled under and forgive me yeah. too because like the thing too to remember is that enemy hates you like, yeah Oh yeah, so, <laughs> and and it's an enemy that hates you, that literally wants to kill you and your children, and it never sleeps, it never eats, and can move about like you said in an instant. So it's a constant observer of every aspect of your life. So it's like, um, if you're talking on the phone to somebody, you're like, man, these are the problems I'm having. They're gonna use that information against you to drive you. Oh, and they can just like. Go to that other person you're talking to and all the other people in your life and use all of that same information, conglomerate it and just make it seem like everything's terrible or everything's great, right? If whatever way they're trying to drive you. Um, but it is, it's like that whole Gnostic, that whole occult thing is about self-will, self-will, self, like then the whole new age thing is like self-love. And it's just like, dude, that is 180 out from what the truth actually is. It is, and it's, 
it's scary to see how how pervasive it is in society like we were talking about before it's like the government anytime they start backing things like oh yeah this is good right <laughs> it's like okay well psychedelics are everywhere it's gaining traction everywhere and what is it for like the whole mk ultra program was like we're secretly dosing people with lsd and psychedelics and starting these cultural movements right like that's all secret stuff now it's just like now people are willingly doing it and allowing the deception to happen it's everywhere so it's like yeah those those uh those programs that were done in secret previously and now are in the open and it's like so successful to the point where people are like yeah let me wait my five months to go do this whatever um psychedelic journey wh whatever the name your drug um uh psilocybin you know five freaking uh what's that gross jungle juice um the other dmt uh ayahuasca, ayahuasca like the, all the, yep. dude and it's like there's no wonder why people are seeing the same types of entities when they're mm -hmm. on whatever this drug is right like it's this one formula opens you up to this this one opens you up to this it's like why do people across the world see similar entities right mm -hmm. well there's there's truth in that too of like so this spiritual realm does exist there's actually like a lot of um people that are secular that write about that as well like the the spiritual realm the dmt mm -hmm. realm mm -hmm. whatever it is right like whatever the again the drug of choice um it's opening you up to different aspects of this realm and opening you up to similar entities mm -hmm. it's like, yeah uh, it's, weird. it's weird they they talk about like oh the medicine is intelligent the medic like dude it's <laughs> freaking creepy the medicine is intelligent it, it knows what you need and you're like oh dude, looking back it's just like how do you even how do i even allow that to enter my body but well, well uh, you know and, and i think the thing that's challenging as well and you know this this was something i had to, to pull back on when i became orthodox is because for me, because I was doing a lot of mushrooms, I was, I was growing them and I was doing them quite often, honestly. But I mean, there were many dark times, but I kind of weighed it because for me, when I came out of it, I had net positives because I would go into it with like, I'm going to work on this piece now. You know, I'm going to work on this. I need to fix this. And with that intention, I would say it out loud because eh, I thought that was what I needed to do. Imagine, yeah. <laughs> I was able to work on it, but... Uh it was it was the the worst kind of spiritual surgery that you would experience in going through it. I mean, it was literally gut wrenching type stuff that you would go through with that. Yeah, and well, and I think that's part of what keeps people going back for more, right? It's like, okay, I had this amazing, not not like that trip was amazing, but I had this amazing result. Whether it was like uh, I felt great on this, or the end result was a net positive for me because mm -hmm. I was able to confront whatever I was working on. Okay, mm -hmm. now I need to go back for more. Now I need to go like, okay, now I need to go work on this. But it is like that. Um, it's like this vicious circle and cycle that like once you start getting into it, it just keeps putting you back into that realm. And I feel like the more you go into there, the more access, uh, you know, those entities gain. Oh, absolutely. Because they're like parasites, yeah. you know, black parasites on your soul, you know, and, and now you're going to have to work that off. Yeah, yeah, because your spirit is going in unprotected, right? Like you don't have mm -hmm. your your body, your meat sack, this protective shield that um, God's given us, right? So you're like easy to latch on to when you are. Um, I mean, you're you're basically disembodying yourself to go there, right? It's like right. the opposite or like the the perversion of theosis where it's like the theosis is the purification, the cleansing of your noose and of your heart and soul and everything to the point where it's like, yes, you're facing these things, but it's with Christ, with Christ and through God's energies that are cleansing. But instead, you're trying to do that without God and through man yeah. and through our own knowledge and through our own like means where it's just like, yeah, it's like you're going to get a slight effect, but it's... Um, what is it called where it's like yes you get something out of it but you're actually there's losing more yeah um, there's an exchange that occurs yeah, yeah. i can't yeah, remember there's a there's a philosophical concept on it and i can't remember what it's called but yeah like you, you're giving up more than than you actually gain yeah but i, I don't know what sorry i'm not a 
philosophizer very Me well. <laughs> Just on the internet. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, you but, lose more than, yeah, it's like, yeah, you're getting something, but at what cost? And what's the price? You know what I mean? And most of us don't realize that because it's so we're so desperate and need and it's like and i know there's the meme of like my mental healths and it's it's true but then it's also partially also like partially a meme because it's like some things it's just just take responsibility and fix it and do it right but then when those those of us that are like truly suffering in a different way it's like we are looking to heal and sometimes we'll reach out and like do the most drastic thing because it's like no i've reached a point where if i don't do something either i'm gonna suck start like something and it's just not gonna be yeah, yeah. for anyone or it's like i'm just gonna continue deteriorating or i'm gonna search until i find it and that like has been such a a turn that even uh christianity at least the point where i was at where i reached that point it's like I, i'd moved to where i where i'm here now in texas but it's like I had to literally leave California to a whole nother state. And I thank mm-hmm. God that he moved me on orders, to be quite honest, because if I would have stayed in California, honestly, I I don't know where I would be today because I was down on a on on a very destructive path of just because I hated myself. I hated what I had become and allowed all these things, the death of friends, suicides, deployments. And it's just like it, it was just reaching this point where it's like, OK, and God took me out of there, you know, it took me and my family. So I was like, okay, thank God, you know, but then I didn't realize it until now reflecting where it's like, okay, it's like something's got to change. And then eventually I was like, okay, if I say I believe in God, then maybe I should actually start believing in him. And then I started taking that more serious and then the coof happens and then everything's shut down. Then I'm just like, bro, what, like, what is, what is happening in the world? And then my church shut down. I'm like, okay, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? And then the whole jabby stuff starts happening. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Like, I don't trust the government already as it is. And they're trying, I'm like, no, something's got to give. And I was like, okay, I got to really search. And then that eventually kind of like, well, R10 and I were already kind of talking. And then uh, over, and then funny enough, I was like posting more memes. And then I sent him a meme of Father Josiah. <laughs> And I didn't realize who it was. I just thought it was funny. And then, yeah, eventually that opens the door and it's like, okay. And then I started looking into that and it's like, okay, this, this seems more real. Like there's something there that I'm not hearing or feeling anywhere else. And I know like not to like talk bad on any other Protestants. Like, I understand that there's some very devout Protestants, some very devout Catholics, some non Chalcedonians, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? But when you have the totality of the truth and where everything is there in this right proper context and order, it it does something that like things start actually coming out and healing properly that just it's like it's but it, it's in a, a way that you can handle because when you try to force it too much, like when we do drugs, when we drink alcohol, you're facing these things in a level that one, you're not sober and you're not ready for. So then we when we force that, it's like no wonder things get a lot more harder because we're trying to do it ourselves when we allow God to do it in the right way it just it's it's a lot better and it's like and it's that slow nice gradual kind of like well, healing yeah. forgive me too I mean because like I think to what you're saying too as well it's as with the the you know with the, with the drugs and, and so many the alcohol and, and and other things in life too as well I mean whether it's Instagram um, it's feeding our will it's feeding our ego in so many ways and it is as as god wills and that's the difference too as well and i think that's one of the challenges that i have often seen at times with um, a lot of within the vet community itself is that um the they're they're so focused on their will and their false light yeah and i think that's what creates the huge challenge and a, a lot of these different issues like that. I can do it. I've done this. I've done that. Yeah, I know for sure. And then even to tack on uh, what Slade was saying, it's like, um, and to kind of put a little bit more uh, with like the, the book with Orthodox and Religion of the Future, it's funny that he warns against his new age stuff and then even also against yoga. And what is the military doing nowadays is they're putting these outside things into it. So it's just like, it's bad enough where it is already and now you're giving a false sense of like 
healing when it comes to that. It's like, oh, just go do yoga, you know what I mean? And like stretch it out and you'll be okay. And like the, and most of us don't understand like the, the underlings of what also goes into yoga and the other kind of uh, religious aspect that goes into oh, totally. that. And I had no idea to be quite honest with you. And then reading this book was honestly like such a big like eye opener because it's like, I used to think that it's like, okay, it's just yoga, bro. You're just stretching. It's no big deal. And then now it's just like, I, whoa, actually, there's a whole lot more that's in there. And then now you see that it's like, I, I've, I've gotten ads or people like, oh, yeah, the military is like now pushing yoga for like recovery. And it's just like, man, like they're really, it's like they, they know that we're hurting and they're like giving this false Christ and this false like, medicine to kind of help with all that and it's and it's tough because it's like some people are they're hurt and not just by like the things that happen in life but in like in also their christian upbringings and it's like and i've heard it said before too like yeah like if, if i'm pretty sure if i heard what your idea of who god is i wouldn't believe in him neither <laughs> so i don't really blame them you know what i mean because it's like the West, at least, uh, there's so much Protestantism and this Western idea of who God is that when it's it makes it hard to stay in that. But like when you have the reality of it, it's like, oh no, this is completely different. This isn't what I thought or what I grew up thinking it was. So it's just kind of it's it's wild to kind of see all that kind of tied in with, uh, especially reading the book and then where the military is heading and society as well. <laughs> I mean, absolutely too. And. Forgive me. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? No, so much there. Uh, you were saying they're pushing yoga. They're pushing meditation. They're pushing, um, you know, just the trans transcendental meditation. They're pushing uh, um, alternative therapies like Eastern, Eastern medicine, alternative therapies. They're pushing, um, not that I believe in the Western medical system at all. Like <laughs> the Rockefeller medicine system. Correct. Yeah. Um, what? Big but, Pharma hates us? <laughs> yeah, right. And they're also allowing, uh, you know, uh, psychedelics on active duty now. Um, really? Some, yeah. So uh, it's it's like it, the, the deception's running deep, man. And it's uh, like you said, dude, we moved out of Virginia Beach um, a little over a year ago. And you know our understanding now of powers and principality is like dude there's so many demons there um just preying on the, the military as a whole but uh, i would say heavily on the special operations community there um mm -hmm. it's just there's like so much darkness surrounding it it's like you can feel it but like i didn't have a way to explain it before you know uh before now and it's just like this constant uneasiness and i feel like they're just preying on uh you know, all of the trauma right like all of the suffering oh, yeah. and they continue to feed it and it's just uh we we literally switched coast we live in the 40 acres in the mountains up a up a like away from civilization <laughs> and, uh, played. so did you become interested because we kind of we went to Houston's and we kind of went down this path so what was it in Virginia Beach that you first became interested in orthodoxy or was it when you moved out there to Oregon we moved, we moved to Oregon yeah okay so it was like in Virginia Beach I was like down this um you know SBNR spiritual but not religious path because I was yeah, like yeah. of psychedelics and I'm like okay I feel like God exists for real now right like because Protestantism it's like a I became so apostate because going through the team's experience and like feeling how broken I was seeing how gross everything is. Like, I don't know. It was just like that cringy, uh, why are we still fighting this stupid war? We could have won this a long time ago feeling. And then to the, like the rationalistic understanding of what the military industrial complex is, um, my body being used up, man, I have like seven ortho surgeries all from while I was in and just get hurt, rehab, go back in. Um, you know, I've got three screws in my L5 S1 with a cage. I got seven anchors in my left shoulder and anchor in each elbow. Like, and it was just, okay, what am I even doing this for? My, my 
constant headaches. Like I can't sleep. I'm pacing my house. Like just all of that. And, and with you being home, like, you know, only 65 days out of the year or whatever, you know, and then to, to, to your family to experience you in that way as well. Yeah. It puts you on all these pills, dude. Like I was on multiple different types of SSRIs, freaking uh, sure. two different types of Adderall. I was on blood pressure medication so I could come down and sleep. Um, I was on a CPAP, like all this weird stuff. You know, obviously you look at me, I'm not, uh, I'm not your typical candidate for a CPAP, but most of us are between the TBIs and the, and the, uh, the PTS symptoms. Right. And yeah. it was like, I, you know, for the longest time, I thought all of that stuff was fake. Anyways, I was like, PTS, oh, that's not real. And then just boom, like all these things start happening. And mm. yeah, I don't know. And it's like booze on top of that, opioids from all the surgeries. And yeah. then I like, while I was still on active duty, I freaking cold turkey booze. And dude, I, I can say this now. <laughs> Before I was just like, people are going to think I'm crazy, but I really don't care anymore because I know what the truth is. When I cold turkeyed off of like the pills and the booze, I was on active duty and I had this burning in my throat, right? Like this burning that would not go, you know, when you're like trying not to cry and you get that lump in your throat. Yeah. Like take that and then just multiply it by 10. It was just like this fire in my throat. And I literally was hearing voices saying, if you just take a sip of whiskey, that burning will go away. Literally hearing like clear as day, but obviously there's nobody around me saying this. It was just like whispers, like incessantly for about three weeks to a month, this burning would continue and it wouldn't go away. And I had trouble eating. I had trouble like drinking water, all that stuff. And I just had these voices telling me just, if you have one sip, that's all it's going to take. It'll just make that fire go away. Mm -hmm. And then like, I don't know. And, you know, glory to God, I wasn't even like asking for his help on any of this. And I, I was able to at the time self-will through this right because like doc was saying dude like, it's kind of something that you know the military especially the team is like dude you you can do anything right mm -hmm. like i would look at anything like oh you want me to run over that mountain cool i can do that <laughs> you know it's just like stupid yeah. stuff now but uh <laughs> you want to see me throw this ball over that mountain <laughs> right no but it was like there's, there's no no no, no. I, i'm sorry i i was just making the yeah, napoleon dynamite like, joke i'm sorry yeah but for real like there's no like actual obstacle that you can stop mm -hmm. me right you know in my mind and but because you know we had i had accomplished so many crazy things sure. like dude you know you land 7k away from a target and go over two terrain features heavily laden and get to there before the cycle of darkness was done like we would yeah. just do that constantly like just things like that right so it's like it doesn't even matter what the obstacle is i can do it um well that can only get you so far before it doesn't work anymore right and so well, I, uh, and especially when it, forgive me when you know you've got to at this point too as well you've got to medicate yourself just to be able to function anymore too as well just to move yeah yeah well probably it was that and like even my wife was getting me dressed to go to work dude i'm like getting ready to take a team at that place as a team leader and i'm like my wife is putting my shoes on for me every day because i'm in so much pain you know um but anyways yeah i i you know cold turkey this cold turkey that and then i'm like okay all my problems will go away right they did not and um still like dealing with so much of all of the results of everything that, you know, all the choices that I had made, all the things that, that had, uh, you know, I'd experienced, I don't say happened to me because, you know, I, it was a choice to be there. So, um, there's responsibility there of like everything, right? Like I, I would choose to keep doing it. Um, then, you know, the medical retirement thing, um, that really messes with your brain because you feel like, um you're needed until you rationalistically realize that you're just a call sign <laughs> and i just take my patch off and i give it to the next guy and they replace me well, that you're day. an expensive call sign though too right you know, but they a lot invested in you and, and yeah, so they want you around if you can if you can but the moment you say you can't they've already got the next man up dude and that's the thing is like it's such a mind screw uh to say like because dude i'm like held together with 
with screws and, and anchors and pins, but as long as you keep coming back, they'll just keep putting you in, you know? But there's a lot of guys, forgive me too, that are in that situation, right? Like many men are experiencing that. Absolutely. And it is a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a mind screw because, you know, you feel important to the organization. You don't want to let your brothers down. Um, and then it's basically you saying, I quit to, mm -hmm. to go through that process. And it's not an easy process. They, you know, we make a lot more money, um, being in, in special operations because you have all these different special pays, right? Well, you also have a whole lifestyle and like your home and everything is built upon what you make as the breadwinner of your family. Like my wife was a stay at home mom, right? Like we didn't have another source of income. And the moment you say, Hey, I can't do this anymore. Do they stop all those special pays? And you go to like, I was at E7, you go fleet E7 pay, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's like, well, dude, I have a mortgage. I have these bills that were predicated upon the money I've been making for like the last almost decade, right? Like, um, what am I supposed to do? And you're not allowed to go out and seek employment outside either while you're going through your medical board process. So it's just like, you're in this weird, um, I know this is not a real thing, but you're in this weird purgatory <laughs> of, of going through this process. That's funny. You know, it's funny that you say that too. It was funny because I was talking to Father Turbo this week and I was describing a scenario to him. And I was like, I know this is the wrong word to use, but I'm going to say it anyway. It feels like purgatory. And he just laughed too, because it's true. I yeah. mean, it's, 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 it's such a befitting word. Sometimes you yeah. just have to use it. Yeah. Like you're, you're okay. So you're just in this waiting room, but while you're in this waiting room, you're going through like this torturous process of like mentally belittling, belittling yourself. I'm not good enough. And, and again, now thank God for the understanding that I have now, but it would have been nice if I would have had those understandings back then. But like, those are literally just demons telling you that you're not good enough, telling me mm -hmm. that you can never recover from any of this, that your whole life is done. And then you well, try to, especially say, you've been built up too, like you're saying, because you can look at that mountain or whatever. And like, I can go clear that. And now you're like that opposite of like recognizing your limitations as well. And so of course the demons are going to come in at this point. Now, yeah. now is their opportunity to like, Hey, maybe, maybe we can get rid of them. Yep. Survivor's guilt, right. On top of everything. Then it's just the guilt of like, I'm letting everybody down, even though you can like rationalistically, like I can look at this through a clear rational mind of no, they have already replaced me. It doesn't even matter. Like the train's not going to stop moving because I got off as a passenger, you know, like that's a speeding bullet train. It doesn't matter who's on it. It's going to keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. But you're, I mean, dude, I was closer to those guys than like my own family at that point. You know, I'd spent more time with those dudes than anybody in my family. And um, then you realize it doesn't, none of that even matters, dude. Like none of it yeah. even matters. Uh, and you don't really matter to them. Uh, and that was just like this, there's so many, it's so layered, dude. Like I, I, mean, I could talk forever on this stuff. And I haven't even thought about these things in a long time because I'm, it's behind me at this point, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel the same way. It doesn't hurt, but that yeah. doesn't change the fact that other dudes will go through this. Right. Sure. And if I can give some perspective to them, I'm like, dude, you freaking, you totally matter. <laughs> All you yeah. guys matter. Yeah. Um, and just because you don't matter to that organization or to the individuals in that organization, dude, you matter to your family, you matter to God, you know, and um, there's so much more life outside of that wherever you come from but you know like i said it's just a there's a you're making an exchange right like i'm i'm giving my life and my spirit my will over to this place in order for me to be there and belong there and it's there's just obviously multiple levels because of the way that that organization functions um like i said it's necessary right i feel like um as much as the military is necessary for, I would say, border security, not the way that they've been employing the military since uh, basic revolutionary war, but um, the military is necessary and specialization is necessary within or within the military. But again, the the way that guys are being used is wrong, and yes. and the it it adds up, right? Like 
multiple times where I was even hurt in training or um, almost killed in training too. Like just so many close calls. And um, what is it even for if you're not being employed correctly? But anyways, that's a digression. Um, so that led to like the psychedelic thing. And then that led to the prelist of looking for God basically outside of Christ, which, you know, we know now doesn't exist, but experiencing just demonic attack, spiritual attack constantly, just this ever present darkness. Um, but thinking that you're, you're working in the light. Right. And then, you know, even outside of the military started a business, um, was with the wrong people, um, that, uh, whatever I can't, I'm not going to talk about them, but just not the best people. Um, and then my wife, than that. <laughs> yeah, and my wife was just like, screw it. Let's, let's sell everything. Let's live in an RV. Let's travel around. Let's find a place to be. Um, she's like, I'm done with this place. And I'm like, so am I. And that was literally the best thing. And that got us started on the, you know, the path to finally getting us to where we were. But at that point, I, I I didn't even know what orthodoxy was. Right. And I still hadn't been seeking Christ at that point. I was still mm -hmm. thinking, okay, well, um, yeah, obviously I, I believe God exists, but still not going through Christ. I'm still like trying to gain this other understanding, like this Gnostic aspect of it, like through mm -hmm. all this ancient knowledge and all these other things. And I'm like, dude, this is just not right. It just didn't, it never, it never made sense, right? Like I'm going to will myself up and spiritually I'm going to elevate. And it was just such, such a deception, but all of that deception stemmed from the psychedelics. But the only positive I can say from that is it gave like a temporary relief, right? Yes. Like a, a temporary relief, but it, but what, <laughs> like Doc was saying that exchange, I don't think it was a, it was a, it was a net gain um because it put me into like i said like okay now i'm not dealing with these problems anymore now i'm dealing with the problem of what is reality <laughs> and what is my purpose here if we're all this one connected consciousness but it made me feel like the created world was fake but it's mm -hmm. not like mm -hmm. right like and i'm like what is my point of even existing now i'm not feeling this type of pain now i'm just like yeah deception of like okay this is this is the matrix this is this is like dude it gets you believing into a bunch of weird stuff that's not mm -hmm. right and it makes uh life seem like from a rational i'm like dude i have everything i've got beautiful wife kids but i'm like what if all this is fake <laughs> you know sure. yeah 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 like, it, it, and it sounds crazy saying this now but like that is kind of like the mindset it was putting me into. And then I was like, okay, there's, there is more to this than this, right? Like it's not fake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then like you said, uh, with all the, the coof stuff, it was like, okay, now I'm going to go down this route of conspiracy theories, which, um, you start looking into why are things the way they are? And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, well, all signs point to demons <laughs> yeah. and all signs point to these people are worshiping money which is also uh in line with the demons and how are they making this money uh using people's souls okay mm -hmm. god's definitely real because these demons are definitely real i've ex mm -hmm. i've personally experienced you know demonic oppression like sleep paralysis stuff like crazy things of and why do these things tell me that god's not real right like literally just like growling in your face, choking you out, saying God's not real. And the only way you can get them to go away, even though like, you know, I, I knew who Jesus was, but I wasn't quite sure. The only way they would stop is if you could say in Jesus name or make, I didn't yeah. know. I didn't make the sign of the cross back then. I had no idea what that, I, I thought that was some Catholic stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, like, and obviously like I was never seeking Catholicism ever. Um, I just, that's way too worldly. Um, the Pope just seems anyways like i'm not gonna bag on the rc crew but uh <laughs> yeah. uh yeah so we get out to oregon and i'm still like in this okay like in the light let's let's work on light and love kind of thing but again still without christ and then dude i'm telling you like one day i'm sitting out back and it was just like 
fall to your knees kind of feeling of like surrender your will like christ is real i don't know what it was it was just like i was super low and i was like okay i give up god i give up what is it what do you what am i doing what do i what do you want from me and then it was like okay jesus is like in it's not like i had a voice telling me this it was just like this feeling and understanding of like okay no see christ see christ right like okay so then i'm like okay i have a bible and i open this thing up i'm like what do i do with this and i'll just start in some new testament now i'm going all the way from old testament all the way through um but i start reading and i'm like okay a church exists <laughs> the church does exist so then I, I start reading some more and i'm like i tell my wife i was like hey i think we need to find a church and she's like no absolutely not like just because we've had bad experiences with you know baptist and protestant churches of just like hypocrites just weird creepy church people you know like i don't know yeah call them like creepy christian crews but uh and I was like, but it's in here. Like we need to be in a church body. Like this, is, this is necessary, you know? And I'm like, my wife is like going through her own, like, okay, yeah, Christ, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know? And so I'm like, we need to find church. And so I'm like looking at all the churches in the area online. What do we believe? I'm like, this is all fake. Okay. You guys are just interpreting weird stuff. Like, every church is saying something different of what they believe. I'm like, okay, well then that's, that doesn't seem real to me. And so my feeling of church is necessary because it's right here. Rationalistically, I'm reading it. It's, you have to be in church, but all mm -hmm. these churches are, are, are fake. And then I don't even know what it was, dude. It was, it was, I think just uh, some, eastern orthodox like byzantine icons and like just like looking at some of that stuff i'm like okay what is that and then i see like the seraphim rose guy and i'm like this guy seemed pretty cool and i'm like what is it that they believe oh that's some like catholic stuff and then i don't know something about it i was like okay maybe because somebody said like this is the ancient faith and i was like oh, dude i've i mean that's what gnosticism is right yeah 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 you and so then I just like, just went down the rabbit hole of like, uh, just rationalistically, like looking at timelines of things. Okay. This church, this church that he's talking about here, apostolic succession. And I start going down like that apostolic succession stuff. Then I like look up some Orthodox podcasts and I start listening to, um, father Peter hears like on Spotify and like, dude, you have to be ready for that because they're long podcasts and they're dry but i was all i was seeking at the time was information and they like dude that guy laid it out and the moment he he said this church was set up for spiritual warfare it like clicked for me for whatever reason because i felt so much of that already and so i was like okay i'm deep diving into this but you know i had my reservations because the western luciferian protestant freemasonic mind which is what this country was founded on in case people didn't know a bunch of Freemasonry and Protestantism, <laughs> like the Western rational mind cannot contextualize what orthodoxy actually is until you kind of like surrender into it. So I am rationalistically like looking at the timeline. Okay. This seems like church. And then I'm like, but what's this saint stuff? What's this icon stuff? What's this Marian stuff? Um, and then, then more research, research, research. And then I was like, hey, babe, I'm gonna, I found this, you know, that church that's by the freeway that looks like a mosque. I'm gonna go there Sunday. <laughs> and <laughs> you, you know, that's probably too, that you say that, like with the mosque thing. Yeah. That was the thing that used to freak me out too about when I'd see some of those buildings. I'm like, what is that? You know, yeah, yeah. I was like, I see a cross on the top, but it looks like a mosque. This isn't making any sense to me. And then you understand that, oh, the mosque actually it from, from uh, yeah, yeah yeah of course because you know satan is a, yeah. the discoverer yeah. and not creator and he has to imitate right so yeah. Yeah. you know so funny the there's a uh, a monastery up here by me uh holy archangels monastery it used to be a mosque and then uh we the 
the church bought it out and it's one of the churches by uh saint ephraim so it's like yeah the first time seeing it it's like oh man yeah it's <laughs> but then when you walk in it's like oh my god it's like in, you're and you're in another world but yeah go sorry go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah no for real like and so i was like babe uh, you know i'm like it just seems perfect this church is you know so close to our house like because we live way out right like yeah it, it, I was like, it's liturgies at 10, like easy for us to make it as a family. And she's like, you go ahead with that. And you tell me, tell me what you think. And I was like, okay. And so I went my very first time, I was like, I'm doing a little recce. And I stand in the back in the narthex. And <laughs> the moment that like, I walk in, like the reader's reading prayers, right? And it's just like, -na 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 -na. I'm like, okay, all right. I don't know anything that's going on in here. Um, and just like I thought, I was like, the women are covering their heads. I was like, okay, well, that's that's strange. But, dude, it's cool because my wife is like, she believes and has always believed in, like, traditional gender roles, you know? And, she, and um, she like, tradition. But she's, she, like, didn't, obviously didn't have, like, the orthodox framework for what tradition was. But she's always been like, yep. Yeah, women should be cooking cleaning running the house men should be out doing the man stuff um Based. so i mean oxys fit so perfectly with our lifestyle already but so i walk in and like i said i'm just like okay this seems cool i love the smells i love the sights mm -hmm. and but you know i'm hesitant but you know i did so much research leading up to like walking into the parish but walking in and then it starts and I'm like, I have no idea what's happening. I'm just going to stand back here and try not to be noticed, you know, and I'm just, I don't want to cross over into the nave. I didn't know what it was called at the time yet. Um, but I was like, that seems like it's the spot for the, the people of the church. And dude, everybody was so, so nice. And mm -hmm. like, dude, somebody was like, Hey man, come up for this. And it was like the blessing. Right and the blessed bread and and i've like i've never kissed a cross or kissed a hand i was like i don't whatever i'm here i'm doing it yeah and then i come back by the way like i'm in the back crying the whole time like i'm in tears um well because because that's it if i could say something too about that like because i know we had a guy i don't know if he's still in here listening to the roman catholic guy he asked us a question too because he's going to his first liturgy tomorrow and to you know, what Slade is saying here as well is like, you experience, your soul experiences the liturgy. And as you get there, if you do go and you become a part of it, you understand more why it is you experience that. Because I've had other people, they say that exact same thing too as well. Like they're fighting off tears too as well, because it's, it's something that's so deep and touching on your soul. And trust me, I still at times, there's times, man, where I go in there too as well. And I'm like, I'm such an awful person. How did I make it here? You know, and, and, and God loves us. Christ loves us. And that's why you make it there. But when you feel that it, it's something that can't be put into words and please continue if sorry to interrupt. Oh no, no dude. And that's the thing is like, I have no idea what's going on. And this goes beyond, this goes beyond like, Oh, I feel overwhelmed with, no, it was like, it was, it was like true tears of repentance without realizing that I was in the, in the process of repenting. And when you hear repent again, with our freaking narrow Western Protestant <laughs> mind, repentance has a negative connotation, but again, that's just another trick of the devil, right? Like repentance is actually a gift. Repentance is just coming back to God, coming close to God because and another thing that people try to tell you is like, God can't look upon, dude, God can do whatever he wants. Like he created everything except for evil. Um, but through the gift of free will, right? Like you're allowed to sin. You can do whatever you want. Like you can literally fight God and make him your enemy if you want. Like obviously it breaks his heart, but through sin, it's our choice to separate ourselves from God. And repentance is the gift that he's given us so we can come back to him. Like we are the prodigal son. That's, that is what we are. Like we can be in the pigsty and he's going to throw a party for us when we say we want to be back with you. And he allows us to do it over and over again too, um, which is whatever. But 
like through orthodoxy thank god you have framework and it actually like as far as i am right now in my journey with orthodoxy like dude you find yourself sinning so much less it mm-hmm. changes it changes you completely and i haven't even been baptized yet dude and again like our priest is like catechumens he's staring around us he's like you guys have this extra grace period right now where, where the Holy Spirit's moving around you, right? And and allowing you to experience these things through your process. And But it's, it is, it's like repentance is a gift from God to allow us to come near him and to be with him again and to work our way back towards him. And it's not a negative thing at all. It's like people have put this hellfire and brimstone attachment to it, but it's not. It's, it's a way that allows you to move closer to God. Um, but yeah, back to that first liturgy, I'm like in tears. And then I get invited downstairs for, uh, dude, I always forget what it's called. Coffee hour, like after. Yeah. Yeah. But they call it in, in Rokor. It's the uh, oh. Trump, some, something like that. Anyways, father Moses, if he's listening to this, he's going to slap me through the phone. Um, but yeah, I come down, I'm just like talking it. And there's so many people that are because we're in America, there's not that many cradle Orthodox here. So many converts that come from like similar backgrounds of like disillusion and Protestantism, um, dude who is like in the Freemasonry thing, like just a lot of people that were deluded, but they never gave up, right? Like they never gave up. We even had like a dude who lived at, um, what's that freaking thing at Big Sur, Espelon, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about, that institute. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we have a guy that's like, dude he's like an inspiration to watch because he's like all in and you can tell it and like i just talked to him the other day he's like yeah i lived at that institute for like two years i was like totally into the new age psychedelics all this stuff but it's like you have so many uh people with this similar background just they never gave up seeking truth i think that's the key too man is truth and then you discover truth as a man that's what really yeah. blows your mind because you're seeking truth and you want to find truth. Truth is a man. Truth is the logos. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's the understanding that you, you eventually come to is truth is Christ. There is no truth without him. Same thing with love. Then there's no such thing as morals or good without mm-hmm. the truth without, without God. Um, because, you know, if you try to say, well, morals exist without God, I can point multiple reasons to why that true because if society dictates morals then just take a look around at what society is would you agree that that's moralistic well no well then how do you know what morals are without god you need the baseline yeah you need the baseline you need the truth yeah because then everything becomes just moral relativity and then just you lose uh because everybody has their own truth yeah i've got my truth you've got your truth and there is no truth and I think it's yeah. wild just to see that comparison where a lot of us have like these converse stories. And it's like, it, even when I first uh, heard about orthodoxy from Romeo, like Father Sarah from Rose was one of the first ones I started looking into him because he kept talking about him. Okay, let me start looking into it. And then he has that same story of like disillusioned Protestant, he goes in looking for the truth in Eastern mysticism, learns Chinese just to like <laughs> even expand more and understand it within the right context. And then he's like, this is all fake and gray and then he's following alan watts new age stuff and then eventually yep. he ends up back in la and he's from he's he's from san diego funny enough so it's like oh it's like okay that's what's up i have a saint from my city like <laughs> but uh uh yeah and he walks into a rocor parish and he it's like another world and it completely turns him around and just it's he in a I think that's why a lot of it, us yeah, it, tend to it, flock. It, it, and... it was a service in Slavonic too. Forgive mm-hmm. me. Yeah. So it was like it wasn't even in English. He's experiencing yeah. Slavonic service because I've had people ask me that, like, "Do you yeah. ever feel weird when they're, you know, like in a place like that?" And I'm like, "No," but I thought about it too as well. But it's like beyond. I think about you know with Saint Seraphim what he experienced right in, in that moment. But in, in any of these places. And you go in there, like you've known the service as well. You can kind of feel kind of what's happening and stuff like that. Because when I was in Serbia, you know, I was going to a lot of these places and there's some of the words I knew, but most of them I didn't. Um, And you just follow along, but you feel it because it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. You're in the right place. You're home. Yep. 
Yeah. yeah, and that was it too. Like my first liturgy, my and I'm not even kidding, it might as well have been in another language. Like I had no idea what was happening, but I knew it was right. I just knew it. Uh, you know, experiencing everything that I'd experienced leading up to that moment of me walking through the doors of that parish. Um, that's like the tears of repentance were just flowing. And I was just like so grateful to God in that moment that I was standing in there experiencing it. And I, you know, I, the moment I'm out of there, I call my wife. I'm like, Hey, it was amazing. I can't even explain what happened. Um, I had no idea what was going on, but we're going back next, next Sunday. And she was like, okay, you say so we're doing it. And dude, we haven't looked back. We haven't looked back. Yeah, Like I said, my wife is just like, you know, she, even before orthodoxy, believes that the man is supposed to make decisions right and she's been wanting me to lead but I didn't know how like in, what do you mean lead the family right like I'm doing my best with again without Christ like that means literally mm-hmm. nothing there is no leadership without him like it's fake and it's like you're completely lost but through the example that Christ has given us like there is no question on what you're supposed to be doing and you know i'd been seeking christ at that point obviously which led me into into the parish and i was like driving home i'm like we're going she's like okay she's like i'm super nervous and like leading up to it like that that next following sunday she was super nervous and um after that it was like okay she like she's in tears the whole time we're standing in the back and then um we go the next sunday and we go we finally go into the into the nave and then we haven't we haven't missed like a feast day or a vespers since like that third time going right and we haven't missed a you know like we literally plant like i'm going to shot show but we're not leave we're driving because i don't want to fly um it's easier just to you know drive down there but anyways like we plan our trips around services now like we're leaving sunday afternoon after liturgy and then we're coming back Thursday, so we don't <laughs> we don't miss anything with the church, dude. It's that's, awesome, that's beautiful. Man. It's yeah. so wild how it changes everything, man. It's like I I want to be able to to serve the parish and and I want dude and the, I don't know, man. Like I just want everybody to become Orthodox. Like and I think that's that's the that is the truth that everybody's seeking. Obviously, like you'll meet so much resistance, even people that are like Christian. Um they they have so many questions and so many hesitancies towards it and i i think it just it requires a lot of you too right like it requires a lot of discipline even my sons like my 15 year old he wants to be a priest my seven year old wants to really? be really yeah yeah Word of god <laughs> yeah my seven year old he was asking what monks are for and i'm like oh they're kind of like you know special operations dudes in the yeah. spiritual around like they dedicate their whole life to serving god and to keeping demons back and and fighting demons he's like can they get married i was like no he's like can priests get married i was like yeah he's like well i want to get married and have kids this is my seven-year-old son and he's like okay well then i want to be a priest my 15 year old is like dude he's like reading all the the catechism books on his own like doing all the stuff he's um he wants to go to this monastery this summer for like this youth program which monastery and serve the brotherhood and like go attend services that one that's in new york in jordanville oh dude that's so awesome yeah Yeah. holy trinity yes yeah Uh, that's awesome that's an awesome program because i know some kids that have gone to the summer program and stuff like that it's a great program yeah so we're planning on that for him because he's 15 so he'll be able to do it this year my seven-year-old crew is like i wish i was 15 i want to go <laughs> <laughs> dude that, you Bro, know, that's so cool too like how long how long um because you say you've been in oregon for about a year yeah and so how long have you been going to the parish there just since like the what is it like very beginning of november dude it's been oh wow okay yeah no, but I mean, and, and then talking to you too as well, because you've got such a great understanding of a lot of these pieces here, which is just great too as well. And I, I like to the way you, you, you talk about, you know, your, your understanding of these things, because it one of the great things too is the humility in approaching it and knowing you don't know 
and then understanding those things. And then, cause I think that opens you up to learning so much more as well, you know, bending the knee before Christ and accepting, you know, and, and that's, that's amazing too, dude. Cause that's three months, right. You know, like, yeah. and you guys have been a part of this. I mean, that's beautiful. Like, like doc said, um, wow. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And uh, another thing too, like, um, I, I know that feeling too, for of like going to your first time and it's like, cause I had kind of a similar <laughs> effect with like how our first liturgy went but uh if my wife was already telling me like hey we need to get out of this church like i don't feel something and i and she was the same, i was in the same spot she was looking for me to lead and yeah i i had been such a hot wreck in san diego that it's just like okay like i didn't know how to same i was in the same position so i feel you on that one and then eventually Romeo's like like giving me like give me all this info so I'm absorbing all this like <laughs> orthodoxy like low-key like without even like I and should I'm trying to up. find yeah. churches for him yeah. too I'm like there's this one where do you live okay yeah. what about this one and go like, check this one out <laughs> and then eventually like I'm as smart as I think I am I'm really dumb you know and then it's like eventually like it our pastor was like yeah, Joel Osteen is a blessing to Texas. And I look at her, oh. and I, was like, I looked at her and I was like, okay, you're right. I should have listened a long time ago. We need to leave. And like <laughs> her and I were like volunteering in her church. We were like working the children's ministry the whole nine for like two, like a year and a half or something like that. So it's like, I was like in it, like after like we moved here. So like, I wasn't like, I was like very serious. And then yeah. she, and then when we came home, she's like, what are we going to do? And I was like, well, there's this Orthodox church. And then she's just like, what do you mean an Orthodox church? Like what? And I'm like, yeah, well, I've been looking into this thing. Uh, and then I was driving my little, uh, my oldest one to, uh, so I'd drive her, I'd take her to school and then I'd leave from work early. Like when I was still in the military, I was like, hey guys, I got to leave like at two to pick up my kids. So uh, later. And so like, I'd listen to Orthodox things with her in the morning and the same thing, like coming back. And then eventually when that, that time came she was like well do we have any other i'm like this and she's like are you sure and i'm like yes i've been looking into this and then when we went <laughs> the same thing we're all like in the back and we're just like oh dude what is happening but luckily like uh one of the guys there stood with us the whole time explained the whole service as it was going through so we're like okay and we're just like i was so kind of like on the fence because i was like well i don't have anything else so it's like it's either this or bust you know because like i'm i I grew up, I was also a little bit Roman Catholic. I was like, I'm not going that way. So it's like, okay, this has to be it. There has to be something. And then at the end, like you're going up for the Andidron and the, yeah, you're going up and you're getting it. And you're just like, oh my gosh, like, like, what do you do? And I was like, I don't know. I'm just following everybody. <laughs> and then as we're going up to the priest, our little one, she was always very reserved. And then eventually she just, it's our first liturgy. She just hugs the priest, gets yes. a bread and walks away. And we're just like, okay. I, yes <laughs> I, I i don't need any more signs that's like we're here that uh, like Dude. It just and and that was the hardest part too because it was just like uh like it was, well it wasn't hard but it was easy but it was like our first time going but when you see when, like we saw that and like for me i was already kind of like going i'm like this it, it's all in for me or nothing and, and my wife is a little more reserved and i don't blame her you know what i mean but it's like she's kind of like on the fence. So it's like, try if, if I move from here and she's seen this already, it's like, I, I don't want to ruin it. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to stay here. And, you know, and, and we've been there ever since. But even before that, like you said, like the same thing for us. We were, vol we were, well, for us, we were volunteering at church. We were there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So when we moved over, it was right before Lent. <laughs> and it was like all the services started and we went to every service and we try not to miss them because it's like, you you see it and you feel it and like in like my kids see it my wife sees it so it's just like it, it just it there's nothing that it like it just yeah i don't even know it just blows you away when you start seeing all the little things not just in you but the people around you as well mm -hmm. and and it's like you hear of these things and like when you're reading the bible and like protestantism little things but then when you actually get to see them you're just like Wait, this is real this oh is my real. god like this is real like it's it's, it's real it's, yeah. yeah and everything means something right like everything yes. that you care means something and you know we did the we did the nativity fest my wife and i the the boys not my 15 year old started towards the end because he was just like no this is right this is everything right but uh my wife and i 
strict fast all the way through. And I was like, man, you know, that's hardcore, bro. Like you're not expected as a catechumen to do that. And then even new people, yeah, like you don't have to necessarily <laughs> go as hard. Dude, that was me too. <laughs> we Moderation is yeah. Yeah. Moderation <laughs> is so it is, it's like, we're all in, like it, we are proclaiming this, we are doing this. And, and I was like, I don't want to miss out on the fullness of what this has to offer. Right. And it was just like, even, even to the point, like, dude, some of our friends here are like, you guys are hardcore. <laughs> like, like you guys are hardcore. Right. And I'm like, um, this, this is our friends that are outside of the church, you know, um, that I just, I pray every day that they just come and they, and they want to be a part of it. But anyways, like, it's not that we're hardcore. It's just that it's submitting. It is, it's, and it has never felt again. Cause like my whole upbringing is like, never quit, never quit, never quit, never, never back down. Right. Like, dude, the moment I was like, God, what am I doing? Help me to where we are right now. It's just like, it's just been a process of bending the knee and, and it has never felt so good or more right. And it's not like, it gives you power. No, it quite the opposite. It just gives you uh, an understanding of how things actually are and how they're supposed to be. And I don't know, man, like it's been um, a massive purge of just like everything in our lives that does not serve Christ. And th again, glory to God for orthodoxy because he has like, changed our lives so much and giving me like i said i just keep saying framework because it doesn't exist anywhere else of like how do you apply these things that are being talked about in the church outside of that church how do you apply a life in glorification of god how do you apply a life of theosis well it gives you an actual framework for this and it's not like it makes it easy but it it makes it easier easier to do these things because it's it that's what it was structured for is to teach you how to walk with him and to come closer to him and and how to worship and how like there's no there's no just like man-made innovations here right like it's it's eternal it's timeless unchanging and that's that's where it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. So bro, check this out. So we've been going for a couple hours. We haven't dove into the book too much. Do you still have some time to like, let's run through the book some? I don't want to like. Yeah, yeah. No, it's still, it's still early here. Cool. So uh, no, I mean, that's great too. Like I, I, I was thinking like we could do like 15 minutes, but this is what always happens. Cause you know, like we had father John Valdez on, uh, we were going to talk about like the youth of the apocalypse and then it just turned into like this whole other discussion. And so we actually have to get back together with him so we can actually talk about the book because it was <laughs> like this. So I wanted to make sure, you know, as well. But I mean, this is great, too, because I think it's really important. And I think to the so many things that are outlined here, because like you said as well, yes, we all want everybody, I think, to be orthodox. And I think that's one of the things, too, that's also what I found quite different is orthodox evangelism is it seems to me much more of like demonstration versus like actually like brother have you you know like <laughs> hey friend have you heard the good news i got this book word? right here you know <laughs> you know it's really funny and even just um ironically enough and uh the name christian the it's like it was given to them based on how they were acting and behaving not about what they were saying so it's like even yeah. then that should be more of like like a big clue it's like well why are christians named christian because of the way they were acting not because of what they were saying and little christ like, yeah yeah but yeah speaking of the book like yeah this thing just i read it on a flight uh to san diego a while back and just there was so there's so much in here that it's like it's it's extremely prophetic that even just for the time frame that he wrote it for was like it's it was happening then and it's more and we've kind of touched a little bit on that like it's become more apparent now that it's just in your face like yeah we're doing demonic things and uh it's uh it's for the good of the people you know like we're here to help you we're here from the government we're here to help but it's like yeah they take all these things and they attach them into 
a lot of the stuff that we're already seeing, like even yoga in the military, and it's just like a lot of people, I didn't know, I knew that it had some form of like Hinduism kind of attached to it. But even then, it's like until like you kind of really see uh, that it's like other religions are sadly, you know, like I know it's going to sound rough, but yeah, they're led by demons and it's demonic. And it's like, and then when you start seeing all these things, all these poses are like, you're praising and worshiping different deities through those poses. And it's like, and you understand why, like, it's like, okay, it's like, like you said, some people might think it's like, yeah, it's, you're being hardcore, but it's just like, no, it's, it's either you're praising God or you're not. And, and that's the reality of these things. And then when you read it and you're like, okay, that, that makes sense. You, you start seeing things like, and going back to your, yeah, that framework, it's like, okay, what is the real meaning behind all these things? And we think we take things so lightly sometimes because it's like everything's become so like, oh man, it's whatever, bro. Like I'm just, you know, doing yoga. It's not a big deal. And it's like, no, it, it is a big deal because it, it matters. It, there's, there's context to everything. And if we don't understand it, then you're more deluded. Well, we're all deluded to a point, but it's like to, to have that kind of naivety to say there's nothing behind it. It's just, you know, the devil is really like, he's out and he's like, he's, he's doing some work for sure. <laughs> well, it's like, uh, from, uh, what was that? Um, if I was the devil, oh. well, no, the usual suspects, the devil's yeah. greatest trick was to convince people that he doesn't exist. And that's just the way to do it too, as well. Because, you know, you think about it. It was 75 uh, when St. Seraphim wrote this book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were coming out of sort of that 60s kind of thing. But you got to think, too, the the framework that still existed in the society at that point from a lot of the people, at least, mm -hmm. you know, the older population. But I think even the younger people. And it was, ironically enough, you know, that whole new age sort of process that was really starting to take hold at that point. You know, I mean, because a lot of the new age stuff, like it had been spoken of before, because you had Crowley, you had H.G. Wells, Helen Blavatsky, you had all of these people, you know, that they were talking about this. And the irony to see, which, what I find, you know, they talk about discernment and discernment, your ability to actually see some of these spiritual things that at the point that he was at in 75, seeing where it was to where we are now here in 2024, the world, how much it's changed in, you know, almost 50 years. And he was so prophetic to describe these things and the irony too, as well, of the sort of bad is good, good is bad sort of thing that with these new agers, to them, they wanted Lucifer because they wanted that light brought to them. They wanted what happened in the garden. They want pandora's box opened up they want this knowledge out there because they want that one world government as well and that's the irony of all of these pieces together you um you strip down the reality of the religion of, of you know like with orthodoxy and all of these areas along the way whether it was the split but even before the split you know you had like you were talking about with the gnostics all of these people there's been these divergence where people are told the wrong things but what really with the the combination of these people that were writing the books about it and the irony of the printing press to help to bring some of these things out as well bring that forward to all of the technology along the way to even now whether it's youtube and social media and all these other pieces where people have the ability to be influenced by these luciferian ideas and they think that it's good you know and that's just what's so crazy about this age that we live in now because it in 2020 with the COVID type of things, we saw that speeding up kind of things like something was torn in the fabric and it wasn't that it just happened in 2020. It had been building up and that was these things. You get people doing the yoga, you get the people participating in these religions so mm -hmm. that they're setting themselves up so that they can participate. More people can participate in these things and how quickly it spread out and just disintegrated society in general at this point and that's what's so crazy about so many of the things that saint seraphim wrote but this book in particular in itself like how it's the framework of what's going what is happening and what's going to happen as well yeah absolutely like his discernment gave him the the eye to see where these roads would lead like he knew what the end state and end goal was for these movements and recognize them happening 
early on and was like, this is where this road will lead. And that's why it seems like prophecy, but he was just able to see like, I know what these people want <laughs> and this is where it's at now. If this continues to grow, which I think it will, this is where it will go mm -hmm. to the point of like, you know, the one world government stuff, like everybody's used to think that that was some conspiracy theory, but then you just look back at, you know, the last hundred, 120 years um, of what I would say modern society is. It's just a repeat of what Old Testament was of, you know, yep. Tower of Babel and the Baal worship and trying to subvert God using a one world government to control everything, to control people. Um, but like League of Nations, WEF, <laughs> United, Na <laughs> United Nations, NATO. Um, one of the creepiest things that I think you can find um, in this arena on the internet is the Lucius Trust. I don't know if you've ever been to the Lucius Trust website. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's dude. It's wild, but I forgot it, about that. It is scary. They literally outline everything that we're talking about right now in a framework of a one world religion where all all roads lead to and, and if you look at where their headquarters are just take a look at contact their headquarters are at the un building in new york um mm -hmm. white hall in london and in um the un headquarters in switzerland it's it's freaking weird dude um and like there's there have their invocations that they say at the un um whenever the un comes together they have an invocation that they say they are constantly asking you to pray for this one world. Like it's a, it's, it's scary. Well, but it's in a, the UN too, they've got that black rock thing in there too, that they, that, that's their form of worship as well, which is just absolutely insane. You know, when you think of like, uh, what is it? 2001 space odyssey, you know, when yeah. they've got something like that in there, you know, just those pieces coming together. And again, sort of that predictive programming kind of thing as well, just, you know, because that's what it, a lot of this is too. I think that's uncovered with, as you're talking about with that, those pieces and these pieces get laid out everywhere. It's just laying foundation here, foundation here, foundation here. It's almost in some ways too, as well, as if all, it, it's not as if they're working together necessarily entirely, but they're driven for the same idea. And it's a competition as to who can reach there first with their plan. Yeah, and another scary website is thirdtemple.org. Third temple. Oh, .org. I remember that one. Yeah, but that's a oh. yeah, third temple. <laughs> yeah, Dang, that's been uh, a minute. Yeah, it's that's a that's a scary one too. Um, and like, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you guys go check that out if you haven't. Uh, but it kind of lays out. Um, mm, that should have. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, there's a uh, one world religion. Um, is that where they're going to get the uh, the the red heifers or whatever to to? Well, just, just take a look at it, man. It's it's uh it's like a you know, <laughs> it, it it looks like a Mike Pence is on the front page with some of their little cartoons. Trump Trump is in there too, signing paperwork um, when he moved. Uh, <laughs> the Capitol, right? The Capitol, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. from Tel Aviv yeah. to Jerusalem. Yeah, there's a whole coin you can get for that, and then they have like they have like an outreach section, a donation section, a political section. Um, but if you look at like why they haven't built it yet, it's like we don't have the political um, authority yet. But then you kind of look at what's happening over in that region right now. You're like, oh, I feel like they're going to be able to start laying the groundwork for this pretty soon. They've already got the design down. Like it's, I don't know, man. It's like if you have any sense about you at this point in time in history that we are living in it's like just pull your head out of your phone maybe take a look at the history of the world what people have attempted to do well i, I can't remember the name of, oh sorry yeah go for it bro uh forgive me uh in the uae there and i don't know if they've completed it but it was where it's the joining of the abrahamic religions you know that type right. of thing and and i just saw too this week in Moscow, they're building something like that with the addition of Buddhism on it as well. And it's like, wow, that's pretty crazy, you know? Yeah. And you're like, again, that, and that's funny, that's happening in Moscow for multiple reasons. But, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just like, why? <laughs> well, why I would 
I, I think it's to what I was trying to say earlier too. I think a lot of these people are on board with it. They're just trying to maneuver their their way to it as well. You know, yeah. I, I agree. Like because you know that's that's the um, do not put your trust in uh, the uh, what is it the princes or the children of men in whom there is no salvation. You know that's the reality too of that Moscow thing, right? You know, yeah. man, because they did push the vaccine quite a bit as well out of there too. Um, I know Patriarch Kirill was was pushing some of that, you know, and that's just that's not saying everybody's corrupt and anything like that. I'm not saying that as well. But there's people that are in these positions in these areas like that, and they're just using it for the power. That's just the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, thank God for people like Father Seraphim Rose that was able to separate himself from the world and and gain spiritual wisdom and discernment to kind of like put into words the things that he was observing and uh, man it's like time is time isn't a isn't a real thing to god right so like yeah. you know we've been living in the end times since since the crucifixion basically um and that thousand years is 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 nothing right to god but i feel like uh I don't know, man, there's so much of everything happening in the world that is pointing us to like, hey, man, it is time for people to wake up a little bit. And if you're, if these outwardly signs of how the world is behaving is not pointing you to what the truth is, like, I don't know what else will, you know, um, the, and one of the biggest things was like that wake up call was the, the coof thing and how they locked everybody down and did what they did. And now just the deliberate targeting of children and, yeah. and just the, I don't know. It's, it is like lockstep hand in hand with, you know, one world government, the Luciferianism, the, the apostasy that exists and the good is bad, bad is good. Um, and it's like, what's next? Persecution, like physical persecution. I feel like that that's probably next. Um, I, I do wonder about how far the physical will go too, because you've heard too as well, because I think it was even uh, St. Severman said something about how uh, in the end times it's going to be, and, and other people have said this as well, um, other church fathers, that it's going to be a mental kind of persecution versus the physical type of thing. To endure that, that's going to be the more difficult type of thing that people are going to have to go through and that i mean you look at like take for example like and this is what i wonder you know because sometimes you read somebody like um saint paisios and the way he was describing things as it was moving forward like he described almost to a t you know things that were going to happen with the coof back in the 80s he wrote some um prophecies back then and about you know the the control that was going to exist and how the um, the injections were going to um, lead to this. Um, I guess you know I I don't know, I, and that's sort of my thing too as well because it, it, is that is that what's going to be? Because I mean yeah, look at look at the from the simple kind of kind of point of view, we know that all of these things build upon themselves. The challenges become more challenging ultimately. People are collecting data. They're figuring out how they can control and manipulate more to your point to, to that. So when you've got to endure almost, it was minor, minor sort of persecution, right? Like, Hey, you can't go to a bar now because you don't have this card with you. You know, there's a little things like that. You, you can't go to church in some places because you don't have a vaccine card. You know, and then think about that too as well. You can't go to church. We're going to shut your church down, but you can go buy booze. You can go buy weed. You can go to the strip clubs, which is just so ironic. A strip club's going to be open, but the church isn't. It's oh, essential, bro. Right, right. <laughs> and you know what's really funny too, because even talking about San Pais, he was, he was uh, when the whole ID thing happened in Greece. It's like uh, some people were thought they were being smarter than that. He's like, no, like this thing is going to lead to something bigger. And it's like, it's going to lead to the mark. And some people are like, oh, I'll just make a little small cross over the number. It's not a big deal. And he was like, no, 
he's like you guys need to fight against this and if not you guys are going to fall into an even bigger like type of like if he, they're they're testing the waters with these little things and it's like i was thinking about something like that similar as well you can pay by touching a card against a metal thing and it automatically pays or the same thing with your apple watch you know i see people do it all the time and they're paying or even your phone and it's just like how is that not a form of a mark and not prepping us to like conditioning and it's conditioning people to just okay oh that's easy that's easy let me just keep doing that and then eventually it's like yeah here's my hand here's my mark like it's and like you said all these things are lining up so perfectly that it's just like I'm not a schizo that's just ranting on pole, all right? This is, like, real life. Like, this is, like, you know, and, like, yeah, and I know most people will be, like, yeah, Doc, you're sleeping with a tinfoil hat. But it's, like, no. It's, like, I see what is going on. And you look at history and all these things. And even like that, it's more apparent now. And they're out in the open with it. Davos just met not too long ago. You know, they did their little thing. So it's, like, it's all in the open. Just because they they, they say one thing, yeah. The spirit of the world is ease and comfort, right? And if more people are, are seeking ease and comfort in in the world. And <laughs> it, that is it just goes hand in hand with it. Like, let me just tap my phone. Let me tap my card. Let me, let me pay. It started with just paying with a card in yeah. the first place, like the fifties, like elimination of cash in society. And it's just like, okay, ease and comfort, ease and comfort. And now now you've got chips and now you've got people like self implanting chips to the point where now it's going to be like, Hey, let me line up and get my, uh, my Elon Musk chip, whatever it is. The, the Neuralink. Yeah. Yeah. The Neuralink. And even um, that actually funny enough, they they're trying to push something and I made a meme about it a while back where it was just like that they were using that they were given that as an option to veterans to put some kind of chip in their brain to affect like whatever like to help with pts like like symptoms and then it's just like like they're really they're trying to control your brain and they're using us like as like a tool for that and like i had come across i was working on something that it was just like an idea and i was like this whole perpetual war and all this stuff happens we all come back broken and bruised and if you really think about medicine, a lot of the biggest advances within the last 20 years has been due to war and due to these kinds of injuries. So then they're getting better at all these medical things. We're mm-hmm. better at prosthetics, better at surgeries, better at enhancing life. And then if you really look at the overall uh, concept of the elites and war, war is for money. So we're just an asset and we're just being used. So then now we're getting hurt. They're still using us for their own science and for their own benefit. So when if something happens to them, they have all this data now that we, that at our expense, that, that they now can use to sh- long, lengthen their lives. And now this is just another thing. Oh, they have PTSD. Well, maybe we can use this to help learn a different way to control people. But really, we're just going to say it's, it's for helping them. And it's like, I, this is such a, like a quick way to kind of like see things. It's like, if you don't see like, the actual intent behind things you're gonna miss when things like that are offered because it's like they're 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 te- they're teasing you hey here we'll help you no worries but really it's like they're it's for something way more evil that people don't realize yeah just it's a chip don't worry about it dude just you know it's just you just do it with your phone and it's just it, it's 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 the slippery slope and people don't come to see that and it's just like all these things are just moving towards that one po- and if you go too too hard too fast sometimes people wake up and it's like they're playing that long game and uh, and i think for once it's like like before i didn't i used to like well i was still into heavy conspiracies but like it was like well how did they all attach like i don't understand how they all attach and then once you kind of see things within this mindset of like no it's the demons are trying to kill us and destroy us and it doesn't matter which way they do it it's just anything to get us away from God, then all these things make way more sense within that, uh, within yeah. that context of all that. It's, yeah. it's wild. Anything, <laughs> it could be the, they can, you know, just, they can sway you with light and love, or they can sway you with fear and mayhem and destruction and carnage, right? Like it's, it's all the same end state for them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, I don't know. Like, uh, there was this shot that they were giving, at my old command um, for PTS, uh, uh, ganglion block. 
and I, I didn't opt for it, but they would um, inject uh, like lidocaine or something into like the ganglion nerve bundle in your neck. And it was supposed to like reset your brain for PTS. <laughs> yeah, it's something that um, I guess like one of the authors of it was one of the psychs of the command. And, you know, they're like, hey, this is this great new thing. And uh, I know a bunch of dudes that did it. And uh, thankfully, I did not. How did it affect them? Do you know? Can you say? Uh, I mean, it would just like, kind of like blank them out for a little bit as far as like, uh, like you just mellow, right? Like it was, uh, some guy's eyes would droop a little bit, turn blood red. Um, and then I, I mean, there was no long-term positive effect of it at, at all. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was. I don't know. Well, unfortunately too, it's experimental. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a, just like a momentary uh, sedation of calming down even those, but it's like, even yeah. if, when you sedate those kind of nerves, it's just like you, the, like the amount of like, n like neurons that are connected and the effects that other different parts of the brain that you might also be affecting, like short term is like one thing, but yeah, like long term, like you, we don't know those effects that you're putting on mm -hmm. someone's brain. And then not just that, it's like, um, I think the other big disconnect that we have as well, it's like we forget it's like we're we're body and soul and it's like it's two things that are mm -hmm. joined together and it leads and people when you don't have that, it's like, oh, we just heal the body and it'll be OK. Like it's like, no, there are deeper things that are in us that that's what needs to heal first to then cleanse the body. And it's just like even reading St. Diophon talks about that, too. It's just like, yeah, you there's this like dialectic also that kind of almost a, a dialectic of like if you're you're new and your spirit wants to move forward the body mm -hmm. fights and sometimes mm -hmm. it's a vice versa so you, you kind of have to keep an eye on both when you want to do something good something bad starts trying to push against and the same thing when something your body is trying to your passion is trying to lead you something bad the spirit will try to push forward with something good so it's like they don't have that to kind of help understand that that where to heal everything and yeah sometimes the body does need help but it, initially it's all, it's a matter of the heart that, and that's where people don't like to go. Cause it's uh, and ironically enough, people will go to like a psychiatrist and everything and they'll go confess <laughs> secularly, but it's just like, there's that you're missing Christ in that thing. And that's why it's like, it, it does, nice I'm not fight. saying it, it doesn't help. I'm pretty sure it does to a point, you know what I mean? But it's like, there has to be that a, a true confession. And cause if yeah. not, they, they're not, we're not going to push you to that, to that repentance, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The secular priesthood is definitely the field of psychology. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, if I can, I want to read something, a couple of things from the book too, as well. And we can maybe talk about those a little bit too. Yeah. So one of the things that um, I had first highlighted, and this comes from, um, for those, those following along reading, it's from page 175. Um, there's an important kind of quote here, and I think it sort of lays foundationally for what we're seeing. And it just says that Satan, it would seem, is now entering naked into history. The years just ahead promise to be more terrible than anyone can now easily conceive. And I think especially, too, you know, engaging in some of these spiritual practices as well. People open up themselves, but not just themselves. As you were saying, too, as well, Slade, you know, like the feeling that darkness out there as well it's been opened up to that and it's just something that continues to, to grow and it sits over a lot of these areas like that and people don't realize that when they start to participate in a lot of these different you know whether it's because let's be honest <laughs> you know i mean the the things warfare is it, it, the military combat warfare is also a spiritual type of thing that's going yep. on as well and that, yeah. that affects it. Well, and then look at to the areas that we've been deploying to for the last however many years, right? Like those are historically um, satanic, paganistic worship areas too. It's like, what are you bringing back with you from those experiences, from those, mm -hmm. from those powers and principalities that reside in those areas of the world too? Um, but that, you know, that's not an aspect that most people can understand that, look things rationalistically and non-spiritually yeah well I and then the layer oh, i'm sorry forgive me 
No, I was going to say I wholeheartedly agree with that because even in Afghan, I had a, a, a similar experience like uh, where it's like me and my Marines are sitting around. We're like at a little like little like post or whatever, and we're like telling scary stories or whatever. And then it's like like, you know, like two, three a.m. or whatever. And all of a sudden we hear little children laughing all around us in our trucks and then we freak out. And then, you know, so we grab all our gear, we're putting on our nods. We're, I'm yelling at my boy who was up on the machine gun. I'm like, Burger, do you see anything? He's like, dude, what's out there? What's out there? He starts going like condition one and he's just like, bro, what is out there? We're like, I don't know. We just heard all these children laughing. And then we started like sweeping the area and there's nothing. And like the nearest village was like a click, maybe a little over a click out. And it's just like, no, there's, there's something out there. And it's like, and you know, before, like, again, I was still kind of Protestant during th that time. And I was like, man, I just need to start reading my Bible more. Cause this is like, this it's real. <laughs> But yeah, it's like there's a there's that aspect where it's like the the other religions do have a satanic aspect without realizing it. You know what I mean? They their claims to truth. Okay, I get it, understandable. But it's like th there's one truth, and and, and uh, that's a good point that Slade made. People don't realize it because they're not looking at it through that lens. Well, and and what is it too as well? Um, Man, I'm, I'm trying to remember the epistle too, but, um, or no, no, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's from the Psalms where um, like the gods of other nations are demons. Um, and that's the reality too of a lot of this. And then to tie back together too, we're going into combat in these areas, but think about too as well. Um, what has happened to the ancient Christians in a lot of these places whether it was in syria and iraq and stuff like that and even even in libya as well the ancient christians have been persecuted and driven out at a level that never even occurred before we managed to go in there so you know you've got even um i, I can't remember exactly the uh, village that was in syria where isis swept through i'm sorry yeah and i was i was agreeing with you 100 percent yeah, yeah. Well, because there's the village where the people spoke Aramaic and um, it was down like in a valley, the village. And there, I know there's two monasteries there. And I know like ISIS was standing over with lit tires and throwing down lit tires on top of the village and chasing off, you know, and think about that, like people that spoke Jesus language, Aramaic, you know. And so, again, powers and principalities, the. They the destroyed of going after, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they destroyed also one of the sites for one of the stylite saints. Uh, what was it, like 2015, 16, I think? So it's mm, just like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's like when you attack God and you attack his saints and the church, it's just like, yeah, you're being led by demons, bro. And you're inviting all these things into that area. So it's like, and a lot of us don't go, don't understand that. And it's like, even in war, it's like the the killing of another person made in the image of God, what that does to your soul and just, or even just you see someone die and you're like, Oh, he's not one of mine. I don't care. It's like, it darkens you to a point that it's like when, when we bring that home and it's just like, Oh, it's whatever. But really it's like, no, it's, it's, we don't understand what it is that, that we are bringing. And if you don't see that, then you're in a worse spot. It's like you're sick and you don't even know you're sick and now you're infecting everybody. And it's no wonder why society, you know, we truly live in a society, but uh, yeah. Well, and, and, and forgive me too, if you're sick and then maybe you say you're sick, but then the medicine that's given to you makes you more sick versus what it should be. Because to SSRIs, for example, I remember when I was on SSRIs, I felt nothing a lot of times. And that felt worse than what I was feeling before, because then those, again, you know, body and soul the soul at that point was hurting so much more because the body was no longer able to express the pain that I was feeling, you know? And that to me was one of the more frightening type of things just to go through. Cause I remember that was one thing that I went cold Turkey off of too. Cause I was like, this stuff's just plain gross. Like, it, it, and again, you know, I was told that this was going to help me and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't. Then I thought something was wrong with me because what I was thought was supposed to be the medicine that everybody was telling me was the medicine was actually breaking me more. You know, and, and that I think can fit into as well, like yoga. Think about that as well. How many people, to your point, they're getting involved with this. They're going to participate in this because you've even got Christian yoga that people are doing is now. And what they're doing is they're actually worshiping Hindu gods and they don't realize this. They're worshiping demons and then they're actually 
bringing those demons into wherever they're at. That's how you speak yep. in tongues, bro. You didn't know that? Ha, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so crazy to think about it now. Like with it, like I was reading it and it's like how there's like this shamanistic kind of a pro or mediumistic of like, you know, you're summoning a spirit and it's like, and I've, I grew up seeing that and I thought that was normal. <laughs> And I went to a Pentecostal church for like five years. So something along that line, like, so I was like eight to like 12, somewhere around there. Uh, but yeah, within that time frame, and it's just like, okay, yeah, people are speaking in tongues. Cool, whatever. It's just part of the spirit. And like, everything gets so hyped up, but it's just like the same thing for like a, a medium. It's like, everyone has to be within the same mindset. Come on, we all have to like summon the, the spirit and we all hold hands and we all do the thing and you see it and it, it once like i read it in the book and i like for me i remembered all those experiences i'm like yo that's like perfectly in line like that is such a like good like observation of what it really was and then just even reading that it's like the minute someone is not within that same like kind of like energy level quote unquote it doesn't work and it's just like hmm that, that should be kind of like a clue there you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah for wild. sure well, you know, and you think about it too, because in the book he said something, I, and um, it comes from page 133. He talks about the wiles of the devil are much more, more subtle than you may have imagined. That the willingness of our fallen human ex nature is to mistake illusion for truth. Emotional comfort for spiritual experience is much greater than you think. So it's like, and that's the thing too, is because so many of these people, they're seeking that that spiritual experience. You know, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Well, then you don't realize this unfortunately and i'm sorry too people listening to this you may not realize this because i was there too as well i was like hey i'm spiritual i mean you know i i i dabbled in too many stupid things along the way uh glory to god i got here but it's like when you're again from the book when you when experience is emphasized above doctrine the normal Christian safeguards which protect one against the attacks of fallen spirits are removed or neutralized. And the passiveness and openness which characterizes the new cults literally open one up to be used by demons. Studies of the experiences of many of the conscious cults show that there is a regular progression in them from experiences, experiences which at first are good or neutral to experiences which become strange and frightening. And in the end, clearly demonic, even the purely physical side of psychic disciplines like yoga are dangerous because they are derived from and dispose one towards the psychic attitudes and experiences, which are the original purpose of the yoga practice itself to Kali, because that's one person in Hinduism that's emphasized Kali, which is a destructive spirit. But with the Hindus, they're okay with that. Like they embrace that destructiveness too, as well. And you know, that's one of the things that's really crazy too. Um, this is the Kali Yuga, right? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. And and there was this, I, this girl that I dated too. And I, I, I'd seen her on Facebook. I actually sent the picture to father as well. Um, she's a beautiful woman. Um, uh, not sure how I got her. Um, but glad I got away because her background photo is Kali, like literally on Facebook is Kali. And I'm like, oof, you know? And again, people are so willing to just participate in these things. And it's just like, and that's why I'm so glad too, to hear, you know, Slade, you know, you, you've, you've come here too to orthodoxy as well, because as you've said, you know, cause there's a lot of those things too, as well. Those, those echoes of the things that we've all participated in, that they're still affecting you. But now your soul gets some respite from all of this as well. Um, man, um, I just, I, I wonder what comes next too as well with a lot of these things people are doing and actively participating with. Because I think, you know, that, that, that's one of the things that, like sort of the irony too, when we talk about yoga, some things I think about at times, it seems to me that that creates the matriarchy. I don't know. Does that make sense? What I'm saying, the 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 feminine side becomes more emphasized. The feminine spirit, and I think it almost comes from that Kali side, the Kali Yoga, you know. And and that is the irony too, as well, of trying to defeat the patriarchy. And that's how do you do it best? Because the patriarchy, the true patriarchy, is with God. God the Father. And with 
Yep. Mm -hmm. And so then you can actually just break it down from that point. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the power of the pagan gods section, um, on page 14 of my, I think I have the fifth edition as well, but it says if Christians are persuaded to throw out or to alter their dogmas to suit the demand for a more up-to-date or universal Christianity, they've lost everything because what is valued by Christians and by Hindus is immediately derived from their dogmas and Hindu dogmas are a direct repudiation of Christian dogmas. This leads us to a staggering conclusion. What Christians believe to be evil, Hindus believe to be good. And conversely, what Hindus believe to be evil, Christians believe to be good. So like that, that would be, uh, you know, we have a patriarchy <laughs> that would lead to their, um, a direct repudiation being a matriarchy. Well, and that's part of the reason too, why you see, I think so many of the churches in, in uh, many of the areas where they're moving towards, you know, the, the women in the priesthood, because you see that now. And that's one of the things that's interesting because I've seen this from ancient faith radio. Um, there's this diaconess type thing. Now the diaconess is real, is real. They're, they're or deaconesses, diaconess, Deac it, it, uh, deaconesses. Yes, but, yeah. but the context well, for it was for a society when they still did naked baptisms. Yeah. Yes. They needed a female to baptize a female yes. con. Yes. Right. That yes. passed. We don't have a, a naked baptism. You have a baptismal robe or a garment. Well, and, and, and it wasn't that the deacon and the deaconess were just completely interchangeable. That's not what it was. Right. The it, name didn't it role it. that she filled for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for a female adult new convert. Like, that was it. And, well, and nuns also kind of became that filling role for the deaconess yes, like exactly. during that time. Exactly so it's it. just like yes. where the yeah. priest couldn't enter if it was like a house full of uh, only for women and it was like a shelter. Then it's like then the deaconess would fill that role where now it's like you have the nuns, you have the mothers that now can like yes. fill that. And that's the the fulfillment of that role, because even yes. the word deacon means servant to serve. Yes. So it's just like. The deacon has his role, but the deaconess is to still serve, but in a different function. Just it's a word concept fallacy just because it has the same deacon in it. But if you mm -hmm. look at the same thing going back to it's like if you look at the meaning of what things are in the context, what well, means to serve? OK, so what what's the context of serving when it comes to the role? Oh, aiding in this way. Oh, well, isn't that what nuns do? OK, then there's no reason to bring it back unless you have a secondary kind of intent to well and that's and, and that's church, really yeah. what it is because they've gone after so many and, and and people have bent over to it and they've accepted it you know because i think um what is it um father josiah was going to in the early 90s become presbyterian or something but immediately he saw what they were doing and so that's when he became orthodox um and you see people starting to kind of go along with this and that's to me sort of like wow you know like i mean ancient faith has had some weird things for a while um but to see they're actually like next week, I think it's going to be, or yeah, a week and a half on the 30th, they're actually doing a documentary on um, the deaconesses and um, they're, they're going to be discussing it. That should be a, an interesting talk because they never do discuss the monastic, the nuns. That's something that's never approached by them. And I'm very much in, in favor of that because we've got four nuns at my church and, you know, um, it, it's great just to spend time with the monastics and, and what they can actually do and what they bring as well. Um, but of course, I mean, look, let's be real. And it's, it, it's, it's something that's clearly stated in the Bible. It's something the church fathers have said. It's going to get to a point where even, you know, Orthodox, even because we've seen it, we've seen it with the ecumenical patriarch. We've seen it in other areas as well. You know, it, there's going to be a falling down. And so there's there's not going to be necessarily a respite ultimately in, in, in the whole church of Orthodoxy. There will be a falling off, but it's not here now. And we can gain this from this. And, and the more people that become a part of it and the participate, the more people repent, the more people participate in all of these things and in, in, in all of the mysteries of Christ and everything like that, that puts that off. So maybe this isn't the complete end times. Maybe we can actually, we can do that and, and, and avoid that end times of where, you know, the religious people are going to have to keep their mouths shut for fear that, you know, that they're, they're going to be persecuted for what they actually believe. 
Um, let's hope too as well that by talking like this, we can we can make people aware of that. I don't know. Um, Knowing's half the battle, right? <laughs> for sure, for sure. What's the other half? Violence. <laughs> Against the old man, of course. But even, uh, what does it say? That even the, some of the elect will be uh, fooled. So it's... Uh, Absolutely. We got to stay on our toes. And I think that's uh, another thing that, like, this book has just made me... It makes you more aware. And it's like, you you try not to have, take the Gnostic aspect of, like, oh, well, I know these things. But it's like, no, it's more of just, like, okay, it's a self-awareness. And it's, like, looking at things. But also looking at the deception that is in your own heart. And it's like a lot of these things where it touches things that it's like, okay, even like the charismatic movement of like, because I, that for me hit really hard because I grew up in that. So it was like, okay. And then you see it nowadays where it's like, you know, that, oh, there's these charismatic little movements going on. It's a revival of the Holy Spirit. But it's like, no, it's never left, bro. Like, how, how could it, how could it revive? Like you're saying that it left for some point, which is weird. But then now it's like, okay, like trying to learn and understand things right it's just like okay it's like when you don't have things right you're looking to always find or better it but the reality is it's like our own pride and ego won't let us like accept the fact that it's like no it's it's there there's a church they've been doing it the same god is the same yesterday today and, and forever and for all eternity and he established a church you just got to go listen but we're so proudful that it's like we don't want that answer because that's it's it's oddly too easy yet extremely difficult <laughs> well and then that also leads to as well where people start seeking truth outside of the church as well it makes it so much more easy where people are looking for fiction and even like with the science fiction because see the again science fiction creates that predictive programming where we really expect these 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 things that aren't christ-like to influence us so you can be I guess charismatic and a, a sci-fi, you know, guy with your bobbleheads and Star Wars, bro. Like that. What's that? Star Wars and my Funko Pops, okay? Dude, it's so scary. I got well. married I got to a Funko people. Pop. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy, bro. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think what's interesting though too, in the because we've seen a lot of in culture, as well recently, and it keeps getting spread about and, and you know in the uh, tucker who a lot of people look to as you know the guy of truth or whatever especially now that he's on twitter but the ufo stuff you know um yeah that's been people, a, a huge movement yeah well and i i guess you know when you when you guys see this what do you guys think like when you see like whether it's tucker promoting it or even you know like the regular mainstream I mean, I think Tucker is the mainstream. He's just like, yeah, is not, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and like that weirdo that was at Congress that literally just said a bunch of nothing went on Tucker's show and said a bunch more of nothing. Yeah, um, yeah, it was annoying for real. Like I was like, why did I even try to watch this? This is terrible. <laughs> He's saying nothing, but yeah, I had this discussion with a, a friend of mine who, um totally believes in aliens but not he's like well i mean they're transdimensional i'm like yeah transdimensional like they are you know coming from the noetic realm and penetrating into the created realm that we live in yeah i believe that he's like no no no, no. like like they're like he would not admit he can't come to the conclusion that they're demons even though he told me he believes in an unseen realm where evil truly exists and it influences man. I was like, yeah, those are demons. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, he won't believe in God. And I was like, that's where I got into the big discussion of, well, what's objective morality then without God? Anyways, that's a, like, dude, that's... They're interdimensional out. space demons, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know, man. Like, I think that if you take a look at, um, you know, like what Crowley was doing and then... Yeah. Werner von Braun and um, Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard and like it's just it's the exchange that's been going on since the dawn of man it's like hey give me this information give me this knowledge demons and you know you get more dominion you get more power here right like you're calling humans which you want to do because you hate us 
Um, but please give me that information and that knowledge so I can, I can build replicants of the things that you guys are making right now. So I, I don't know, like one of the examples that is in the book is that monk that is be, becoming deceived. He gets a garment put on him that everybody else can see. It's just yeah. shining. Right. So it's like a manifestation of something that's created in, in physical reality of something that demons have bestowed upon him. And the moment that, you know, Christ is mentioned or it gets called out, it disappears. Yes. Right. So yeah. things can manifest and disappear from the created realm um, through the power of demons. Uh, and I would say that a lot of these craft beings of light energy whatever these people want to try to call it like that's it's nothing new right sure. um it just became something that was put into society through I, I like government leaks but like if you look at what um our world war ii pilots were seeing when they're going up against the germans like the germans were creating craft that yes. would be otherworldly at that time period like jet powered airplanes right fighter jets when we've got prop planes well not to say that we didn't have our own occult stuff going on but that really ramped up post-world war ii when we brought all over you know operation paperclip right like we brought all those nazi scientists over that were working on these things and i say scientists loosely like they're engineers but obviously like it's no secret that the the nazis were way into uh the occult and gaining information that way. And um, I would say that a lot, of, a lot of the technologies that we do have in that arena or elsewhere, like anything that's subverting God or going against God or going against mankind in general, because, you know, created in the image of we're precious to him. Um, I think a lot of that information was gained through um, occultic practices and when I say occultic, I just mean demonic, um, satanic practice. Uh, I mean, you look at Lamb, the sketch that <laughs> Crowley did of Lamb. You don't tell me that's a little gray alien. Like, yeah. right? Like, it's there, L. Ron Hubbard and Jack Parsons, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Jack Parsons, known occultist, carrying on Crowley's work. Um, I don't know the i look at the rockets and everything else that are supposed to leave <laughs> it's so funny now all the stuff that's supposed to go to the moon it just can't make it there now for some reason and now that, 50 years later we now that we've got like technology that allows us to actually observe these things all these rockets fail or they blow up before they get there and all it's like yeah because you can't fake it in a movie studio anymore right um but that's just towers of Babel constantly right like you're sending a rocket to space trying to break through like that's just the tower of Babel all over again well it, it's it's it makes me think too of like the book of Enoch with the watchers and everything like that you know the the technology they talk about in that um while it's not canonical 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 um right. at least in uh Ethiopian they, they actually do have the book of Enoch as part of it and then when you get into that and you start reading that you understand that it, it goes all the way back again to the Garden of Eden. It's the knowledge, and we want that knowledge, and we partake in that knowledge. And I think what's ironic as well, previously, they may have realized at times there was something spiritual to it, but then to now say, hey, we're going to look to these beings from another world. They're going to teach us now. You know, like, we're just these dumb people, but if we just follow the path of evolution that is, you know, laid out for us by Darwin— then, you know, we, we, we will just naturally get to this point. But luckily, these aliens will come along and they'll show us where we should be in evolution. So people will then give fealty, I think, to the demons of these UFOs that participate ultimately in this one world kind of antichrist sort of thing. Because, hey, these are the guys with knowledge. We're just these dumb, ignorant humans. We can't stop fighting one another. We just need to turn to them. You know, it's, it's funny, too. It just came to my mind. Uh, that tool song right in two where he's actually talking about uh like the angels looking down on humans and that's what we'll do we'll look to like maybe they're angelic as well perhaps and they're yeah. going to teach us you know because we're just we're just too dumb and too violent <clears throat> to ever get there on our own yeah it's an it's an abdication of authority as well right like mm -hmm. in the, um to them and it's just a part of the deception of 
like I feel like these aliens, right, obviously are going, they can manifest themselves as angelic beings. And that can be all part of the deception of like, these things coming down from the heavens, telling people how to live. Oh, and here's your Christ over here. <laughs> Come go, go listen and fall down before this Christ. Um, I don't know. There's just so many, so many ways it can all play out. And it just feels like um, the more and more people that are deceived by it, because, you know, if you are believing in off world beings, then um, it just moves you further away from the created. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I, so like it doesn't satan doesn't care it's like he can deceive you with light and love or he can deceive deceive you with you know pain misery destruction um nihilism um if evil exists then god can't right like that kind of mindset that people fall into uh if if god exists then why is there so much pain in the world that kind of thing or like oh look at these other beings that were never talked about biblically and they're here to save humanity, not your yep. God, right? Like there's yep. just so many ways that it can, it can be used well, again. Well, and the irony of that though, too, and especially, I think that's one of the strengths because you were talking about St. Anthony before too, Nectarios man, uh, doc, um, you know, St. Anthony, he talked about a lot of these things. These are things that have existed. And even um, from Father Seraphim's time, there was a bibliography that talked about how he, they said specifically it, the the Air Force said this that many of the UFO reports now being published in the popular press recount alleged incidents that are strikingly similar similar to demonic possession and psychic phenomena, like they kind of know this is it, and, and I guess that's sort of the trick too. Why you've got the Jack Parsons and and the others that are participating in this, they know what they're doing. They want this to happen, but that's also the sort of uh, interesting aspect of why a lot of people don't even know the church fathers because they've talked about these things it's it, again nothing's new under the sun but if you convince people it's new that's what's important that's the great part of the deception yeah it's just repackaged it's the same uh show just repackaged all over again and then and then it's, uh, what's that old saying you don't know history then you're going to yeah. be bound to repeat it and it's like it doesn't just go for the secular aspect it goes also for the spiritual aspect because it's like if you're not aware that you're sinning or doing a certain thing, when it comes back again, you're not gonna you're not gonna see it. And you're like, where did that come from? But it's like, no, you have to be aware of yourself and what is going on within your own uh, like mind and heart, so then you can see all these things and discern them as they come. And the same thing for all these things historically, like when these things happen, yeah, like they they admit it. It's like we know what is happening. So it's like the same thing in our lives. We're going to fight against the, these passions consistently. And sometimes they're going to dress themselves a little bit differently. You know, so it's like, yeah, it's uh, it's no surprise that we fall for these things that are should be so simple. But we're so already deceived that we think we can do it on our own. And it's like, no, we just got to ask God for help. And then he'll shine a, that en enough light for us to kind of be like, OK, there it is. Cool. Let me hold on to that and let me keep like uh, making myself available to God, not the other way, not trying to bring God down to my level. It's like, no, I need to just go to him. And when these things happen, it's like, yeah, of course they're going to happen because we're, you know, we're sinful creatures and we want to hold on and pay attention to anything but God sometimes. And like even with like the alien thing, it, the more you pay attention to it, the more it becomes your God. <laughs> and it's like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're feeding it that energy that it craves um, mm -hmm. and that worship, whether you realize that you're worshiping it or not, the more you focus attention on something, mm -hmm. the more, more of your, your concentration, your energy goes to that. That is a form of worship. Yeah. Um, the more you believe in it. Um, so yeah. What do you think? Do you think there's a uh, created crafts that man actually possesses gained through information and technology? No, because even then, yeah, like uh, manifestations of demons, manifestations, because uh, technology comes through Cain, like even like Cain and Abel, like all that stuff was coming from the Cain, from the Canaanites. So it's like technology and advancement from those societies comes from that. And Cain fell from God's graces when, you know, he killed Abel. So it's like, 
yeah, they were already practicing certain things and getting that kind of stuff from demons. So it's like if you just live the nice, simple, working, hard life and count on God, you'll be fine. All these, everything else is vanity. It's it's extra. We don't need it. So it's yeah. like, but I think, whoops, if I can, to you know hmm. um, what what Slade's saying though, like humans have made this based upon knowledge that they've gained from the demons. Is that what you yeah. were asking? That that's what I was asking. Yeah. Do you I would think say that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I, I mean, like, if you look at the advancements in technology, uh, I would say that it's it's not like some dude just sitting here thinking of these things on his own. Like they're being influenced by something, and that's why I would say, like, you looked at the, the some of the stuff that the the Germans possessed during World War II, um, so far beyond anything that we had, right? And then all of a sudden, boom, we get all those same technologies, and obviously we find out later on Operation Paperclip happened. We gained a lot of that information from these same guys, um, and I don't think that there would have been such a disparity if it was everybody was on that same playing field. But I feel like that there was a lot of information gained through an exchange of occultic knowledge from demons. Right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there are actual craft that we do possess that they were able to reconstruct and build through information exchange. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that, that's a possibility. Um, and I'll tell you after you tell me what's up, I'll, I'll tell you, like, I, I experienced one of these things um, when I was uh, in trade at like a training detachment before I went to my last command. It was out in Nevada at one of the uh, bombing and test ranges. But uh, I'll tell you that in a minute. But just let me, yeah, tell me what you think. Do you want to go or do you want me? I want you to go and then I'll tell you okay. about like the experience. Well, that I okay. Had so, right. Craft. I mean, I think that there's, I, I, I don't know. Yes, it's information exchange. And I think the information exchange comes down to the practices that are being done. I do think absolutely that the occult came over with Operation Paperclip and that greatly influenced a lot of what we had happen here. I think without a doubt, it's it's you tie that together with the Masonic nature as well, that was just a groundwork and a framework. I mean, let's just go look at Washington, D.C. as an example of a, of a city that's built on Masonic ideas. So exactly. then you you bring in your best from the, the you know, small mustache fans that came over here. Um, it's, it's the layers that are all built together. So everything that we're seeing, it's, it's that, I don't progress it, it's 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 progressed in that way so that's where we are now and i think that at the same time too again to that point that was made earlier there's the exchange that occurs so you you lose more than you gain and our society has now lost more from the knowledge that we've gained and that's what we're seeing that's also i think as well what's affected our society so you've got that demonic aspect from there i do think especially to what we were just talking about before going into these ancient cultures these civilizations where we've participated in that the blood sacrifice that has occurred that blood is on our hands now that blood is affecting us but that blood opens us up to those demonic powers as well that are influencing us and they were continue to as they drain us as well you know, because that's what I think we're seeing in society is that drain that's incur occurring because we have given so much to that. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I and I, I agree on that, too. Um, yeah, because <laughs> you got to feed it. You got to feed the beast what it wants. And that's what it wants is a godless pagan society in worship of them. And yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I totally believe that, um, you know, it's all demonic energy, it's all demonic influence that aliens are definitely demons. Um, but I, I do believe that the purpose for our, our people, our wicked leaders that, you know, are subservient to them and worship them um, is the power that they gain, the money, the influence. And yeah, these technologies, these weapons of warfare as well, like, in the created realm um, that they gain uh, in order to continue to control the population the way that they need them. But yeah, dude, I was a, I was a ground mobility instructor um, for East coast teams and I ran uh, all 
all like the live fire ranges and stuff. And we would have, you know, every East Coast platoon would come out and do all their vehicle IADs, all that stuff. And one of the evenings I was shutting down the range. I was like the last dude out there. It's a bombing range in the middle of Fallon, Nevada. And there's a, another dude I'm on the phone with, one of my other um, teammates that's in trade out with me. And he's shutting down that range. And we're just talking like, hey, uh, all right, I'm locking up the range, blah, blah, blah. You good out there? Yeah, I'm good. And dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm in the truck. And obviously it's in the middle of the desert. I'm the only headlights out there. And at first I thought it was because the that's where Top Gun's at, is out there in Fallon. Yeah. The jet dudes know that we're, you know, they can look at the range schedule and see, oh, NSW is on the range here. So they like to mess with us sometimes if, you know, they realize that we're cold at that point. And if there's jets, they'll sometimes like they'll do like an afterburner fly over your head to scare the crap out of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm on the phone talking to my buddy and this freaking impossibly fast blue beam of light from like six to 12 over my head right like so tail of the truck across the hood um and it's like maybe 30 feet above it is like right above me and it just and just disappears right but the moment it, i see it the phone just like goes into the, like this garbled noise of just like and then i'm like hey dave you there dave nope hang up and call him right back i was like hey dude did you hear like the static on the, on the phone? He's like, yeah, it sounded like, dude, I'm telling you, like my literal description was like, it sounded like little alien voices. Right. Hmm. And, and I was like, he's like, yeah, dude, I heard that. And I was like, bro, let me tell you, this thing just happened and it flew over my head and it was silent too. There was no sound. So I was like, okay, maybe it was some, like, wild, dude. There's no maybe noise. It was, yeah, there was zero noise except for like the phone doing what it did. Um, so I was like, maybe it was just some like experimental aircraft or whatever. And this is before I believed in like, you know, aliens or demons or anything like that. I never believed aliens lived. I like, for whatever reason, I just couldn't, it's like, there's no such thing as aliens as far as like them coming from another planet. But then when that happened, I was like, okay, that was really weird, but maybe it's just like experimental aircraft. Right. Cause you know, the airframes we have are, you know, some of them go all the way back to like world war two, Korean war. Um, and I know that, you know, they test things all the time and that kind of just like stayed in the back of my mind. And then, you know, coming to the understandings that I have now is like, it could have been an experimental aircraft or it could have straight up just been a demon messing with me, you know? So I don't know. And then another time, um, well, you know, what's funny if I can't, excuse me, the, the, yeah, yeah. the, the blue beam, that's just was really interesting because project blue beam, it just right. like, it jumps out too, as well, because of that. And what I find interesting too, because it's Fallon and Fallon and, and, you know, I've got nothing to back this up. However, I always wonder too, especially now that you've said that with burning man, not being too far away as well is like, is there something there because of what goes on at burning man? You know? Manson too. He was out in uh, by Twenty Nine Palms, heading that way towards uh, Nevada. <laughs> so there's yeah, a mean, lot of activity. Yeah, there's there's a certain reason why the you know Desert Fathers would go do what they did is to go out in the wilderness to test themselves, right? Like there's there's demonic activity in the wilderness as well. So yeah, who knows? But there's another time where it was a vehicle full of us and we're driving back towards Fallon and it's like pitch black outside it's nighttime and dude all of a sudden the sky turned to daylight and i'm not even kidding like everywhere it wasn't just like this light in the sky the whole everything turned to daylight and then flashed back to like it went right back to darkness and we're all like did a nuke just go off like one of those yeah. things everybody in the truck was like what was that you know because it it wasn't like a flash in the sky everything it just went to daylight and then back to black and I was that's saying, wild what, what was that and uh, you know we're, there's like five of us in a vehicle so like we all saw it yes yeah well and to think about that too because i've been that you know that desert black too when it's just pitch black yeah. like that too as well like to all of a sudden to to switch to something like that yes and inconceivable. To, yeah yeah it did it made no sense but we're like well it must be you know just like at, at first we're like did a nuke just go off <laughs> like what is this you know but uh you know yeah whatever like i don't know yeah, um, I don't think that that was like man-made technology. Now, you know that, but who knows if that was you know a demon flying over my head with that blue light thing that made the the phone go crazy, 
Um, you know, there's a lot of accounts, you know, reading about it in the book as well, just like engines blanking out, yeah. radio silent, that kind of stuff. But to hear like weird disembodied, like mechanical voices on the phone, well, because you know, I was on the Bluetooth. And, and you've got to think too, that that's intentional, right? Like, you, it, it they wanted you to hear that you know like yeah. there's there's a reason for that what it is i don't know you know as well but maybe that's part of the things the questioning of um if, i don't know it's it's, it's weird I, I have to think about that one more too on I, that, I, I would say yes because if like you think about it it's like we don't truly know ourselves but if you have an enemy who their job is to destroy you they're gonna study you and they know humans and they know how to attack us the best. So if they've been watching you for a while, they're gonna know the best angle and the best approach. Even if you take the military aspect, how do you attack a target? You sit, you recon, you see their habits, their life and what's going on and all these things. And you get a schedule down, you get to see what they like, what they don't like. And you can make a note of all these things. So it's like, okay, now I know DOL. I'm gonna get them. Yep. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah. so then it's like and just like you said Romeo it's like yeah you, you see these things and it's like when it comes to Slate they're like okay he's already been exposed to this many things he has these pre presuppositions sort of that we can kind of attest to okay and it's always it's, it's small well, little things you know what I mean and, it, and eventually it well, builds like, to this big like bigger kind of thing and it's like sometimes we, we don't see things and we just like we just brush it off as like oh it's just a thing like whatever but then when then the bigger things come is like wait what is it what what was that and sometimes yeah there's more people that i've been and uh already kind of like pushed to that so then that way they're ready to kind of see that bigger thing and even going back to like the whole military aspect of it there's so much demonic underlings that we don't see you know what i mean so it's just like that's oh, yeah. another thing too that you have that it's like we're we're putting ourselves into this this system that's already you know it's it's already been turned to something not good, you know what I mean? So it's like, and then when you're going out to war, you're killing people or you're helping with these kind of things, it's like you're darkening yourself and then all these little things just add up to now it's like you're seeing these big, these bigger kind of grandiose type things. And even the book says, it's like, you, people look for one small alien thing and then it, it's gotta be the, another thing and then another thing. And then it's like, once they get to like that third level that even the, the secular, uh, professor was saying like no this is close to like a demonic possession type of attack like it's it's crazy and it's like but all these things build up because if if it was all at once they would reveal themselves you know well forgive me too because i think in the book on page 106 here specifically that the literature has many examples of demonic manifestations which fit precisely the ufo ufo pattern apparitions of solid beings and objects whether demons themselves or their illusory creations which suddenly materialize and dematerialize always with the aim of awing and confusing people and ultimately leading them to perdition. You know, it says like Anthony the Great, St. Cyprian, they all experienced these types of incidents. And, you know, I think that's, I think that's really what, what you experienced, you know, man, I think that honestly, that is too, especially, especially too, like the disembodied voices kind of thing. Like that's just to more trick you and just to make you be like, wow, what's going on. Yeah, aliens yeah. aren't real, dude. I'm gonna go look. At them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it did. It was funny because it was like, okay, that was weird, but it made me think that it was uh, just because of my experiences. Like, maybe that was just some like weird aircraft that had some weird SIGINT capability yeah. in there. You know, like that's what I thought because I was like, yeah, well, aliens aren't real. But that's well, another that aspect. Like, if aliens aren't real, then demons aren't real too, kind of thing. So it's like multiple ways that could be looked at well and then i mean because it's kind of to your question though too as well because you know with that you were asking before you know and, and it's that exchange because some of this somewhere along the ways we've gotten some of that um let's see if i can gather my thoughts here exactly now sorry my, my thoughts kind of drifted a little bit sorry my add kicks in because i've got like two thousand different things going through my mind but <laughs> just the the um the ability that we've gotten now and we've gained some of that technology. So perhaps there are at times as well, because I do think that there, I mean, come on, let's look at, look at the stuff the agency does and the derivatives of the agency and things like that, you know, with their involvement with psyoping people and things like that, that they're going to play games at times as well. And the demons are going to. So 
I don't know. Is it one of those um, 50 cent one, half a dollar another, or whatever you want to say, like six, six, one, half a dozen another? You know what I mean? Like, does it yeah. really matter at the end of the day? Because they're all driven also by the same goal, really, to, to create that sort of dysfunction, which kind of goes back to what was it, Bill Casey, the head of the CIA, is that we know that the CIA has been successful when nobody will believe any of the news that they're seeing at this point, like that's when the CIA, it, it's crazy when you think about that too, because that's about the same time, the seventies that Bill Casey, William Casey head of the CIA was saying this stuff. And yeah. when, when you, when you think about as well, kind of like the project mockingbird stuff. Yeah. 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 But it, and he even said that outside the project mockingbird, but I mean, one of the things that was interesting was that the church committee, where what what did they say to with to go in line to the project mockingbird that they had 300 uh reporters on staff for them you know at, at, at you know different news organizations there were 300 reporters and how has that changed but those pieces i think it's it's layers of this deception and it again not to kick beat the dead horse it's the powers and principalities and they're they're going to come at it different angles and different directions and I guess that's one of the things too, at times it still kind of gets me a little bit, you know, because knowing how the beast has been fed by this country, um, I don't want to dive too down too far in this, but it, it, it just, it hurts. It hurts sometimes still as well, but that's also why I'm glad because at the end of the day, do not put your trust in princes or the children of men in whom there is no salvation. There's salvation yep. in God, salvation in Christ. And that's the truth. And that's the reality. Yeah. 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 Dude. I mean, on that note, I don't know how much time you guys got, but like just watching Trump. <laughs> scary, dude. Like well, the the fever please. pit that people are in for that guy. And it's like, you think that a man's going to save you. It's so weird to me. Well, and and let's let's really okay let's 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 peel that back a little bit let's 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 talk about that you know quite a bit because i know i'll be honest 2016 i thought it was funny i thought it was just funny because here's a guy because he did he he opened reality to a lot of people and that was kind of fun to watch and everything like that but then when you also understand like the neuro-linguistic programming and how he's using the NLP at times. And you combine that too, as well with that QAnon stuff. And then, you know, he constantly says he's going to do things that he never does, but people are be like, well, at least he's better than the, the, you know, whatever else. Yeah. Maybe he's the lesser of two evils, but that doesn't make him not evil. Still That's poison. Still. Yeah. Pick your poison. You're still drinking poison. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and maybe, I don't know maybe i need that quick poison like that croatian guy drank at the uh the hague when he was being uh when he stood up there and he <laughs> you know but i i think sometimes i don't know you know it, it, i think to that point okay the the poison though too as well what gets me and which makes it what makes it difficult to go for the quick poison is that there's a lot of people i know who haven't found christ and haven't found god and i still hope that they will have the chance to and i think that's the only thing that really you know, holds me back from actually going all in, in that direction. Yeah. I, I, I mean, glory to God too. It's like this, this, um, time period of being able to find, find him. But it, dude, you do look online and you see a lot of people coming to Christ that you wouldn't have expected. But then I always ask myself, I'm like, well, which Christ do you think you're following too? <laughs> you know, I, I find well, myself yeah, yeah, yeah. orthodoxy because I'm like, if you're not orthodox, you're still being deceived, you know? I do wonder sometimes if, and I, and I brought this up with, with father as well, because I don't know if you ever, if you guys ever heard of this, it was known here and, and father and I talked about it. I don't know. It was about 40, 50 miles outside of Kansas city. There was a nun a Catholic nun in a monastery here who was uncorrupt. And, you know, I, I you know, you, you got to wonder too. At time, I mean, I, I do think that, yes, all of the truth is an Orthodox and things like that. And I do think there's the chance though, at times, some of these people outside of it, because there's going to be the pure hearts that exist. 
and but it's it's so much more difficult it's it's especially with everything that these churches open themselves up to you know now especially the or um catholic church with the blessing of the same sex couples which they're going to excuse on some way but uh, mental gymnastics they play on that it's not uh, gay really it's not <laughs> well i know that um um doc here's got a hard stop uh coming up here because he's got to be somewhere at three yeah uh, sorry <laughs> and we've been going and, and i and I actually i'd love to like maybe talk some more to you dude because i really do enjoy talking to you i think what i'm enjoying most about this you know when we first started interacting um and then now even talking to you is where you're at already in your spiritual journey um, but I think that comes down to that seeking of truth and combining that with humility and those two things, there's a strength that's going to come from that and knowing too that your wife and your family, because one of the things that you mentioned to me, um, and I think would be interesting as well, uh, you talked about perhaps your wife and you doing something, talking about some of these things. And the reason why I, and it stuck with me is especially because I think the challenge that exists in orthodoxy is it isn't always as welcoming for the women. And I think there need to be more women voices out there. And then even as a couple too, as well, because I know doc, you've gone through this and I know too, as well, I, I introduced you to another friend of mine as well to talk to because he's currently a catechumen and trying to bring his wife into it is I don't think there's enough of a voice out there for the women in orthodoxy. They need to understand that. I think that's th this, that's a gaping hole that we have in the online community. I do see at times some of the women out there doing it. And one of the challenges, and I've seen this happen too, is because of the rabidness of some of the, you know, ortho bro guys, like they come down hard and um, that's what creates the challenges. But I, 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 any women that are listening to us, you know, and then even if your wife is willing to, at some point, maybe it's not now, but in the future, I think that that would be a great type of thing to really engage in and, I think too as well. Oh, I'll let you speak to that. But beyond that, I want to just hit on uh, really quick. You know how 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 do you approach this? And I'm going to just read kind of from the conclusion of the book as well to that. So before that, please, uh, Slade, if you'd talk, speak um, <clears throat> about like my wife coming on and talking. Well, and just you know, yeah, and just maybe in the future us talking to as well and coming back to some of these things. Yeah, and I would I totally. I, enjoyed my time with you guys and uh yeah like i said i'm just just a baby right now on the catechumen side and trying to learn as much as we can and and apply it in our lives and like i said we're just head first into it all um yeah my wife would love to be able to come on and talk like i said she already has like a, a presupp presupposition in the worldview pre-orthodoxy of you know traditional gender roles and that a woman's supposed to submit to her husband. This is like, again, without the, the framework or context of Christianity, she already had that. So now that um, it exists in this way, it's not just like you submit, you do all the work and I get to sit back and-, and I yeah, that's, that's, yeah, cause that's not what it means. <laughs> that's not what it means at all. And it's, um, it's just like being on a team, dude. Like everybody has a specific role to get to the same end state, right? Like. I'm not a freaking medic, but Doc's a medic and I depend on Doc to know the Doc stuff, right? Like, just like he would depend on me to be the lead breacher. He's not the lead breacher. That's the way I kind of look at it is like, we're in a team, we're here to support each other and in, um, in following after Christ. And the framework is there for the Sola Scriptura bros. Like it's already there in the Bible and how you're supposed to do it. But the church actually gives you um, a reality of how to apply these things. And like I said, it's, Anytime I, you know, you feel like you're, you're kind of not fulfilling your role, like do the church allows you the opportunity and the um, understanding and the teachings of how to actually do these things. And it's in a loving and mutually supporting way. It's not a, she submits to me, I'm, I'm dominant in these. No, it's not like that at all, man. It's like, dude, you're the TL, you're the team leader mm -hmm. and you're it's here to run the house. Like there's roles that she has. Mm -hmm. She's here to run the house and do these things. And she can't do that without your support as well. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not fair to, uh, women to have to step into a man's role either because yep. they aren't designed for that. Just like it's not your, you as a man aren't designed to step into a woman's role. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's, 
we are on the same team and that's what it is it's like there's roles on this team and state and the end goal and you know glory to god for getting us to orthodoxy because now like i actually know what i'm supposed to do you know instead of yeah, floundering, yeah, yeah. lead me i don't know how to lead you you know <laughs> I, I, honestly like she would be like you need to lead me i'm like what does that even mean right yeah. and yeah and, and i think about all my failed relationships at times i would get that at times and i didn't know what it meant either and it does make me wonder and you know like i never want to live in the past but you know, just to understand that now, like how things might have been different, but there's a future. So now I know. Right. Yeah. And dude, like my wife would, would love to be able to come on and talk about that because, and, and that's what, you know, she, she has a heart and a caretaker's heart. She likes, um, she wants as many people to come to orthodoxy as I do. Right. And right. she, she's like a trained and certified trauma addiction and recovery coach. So like she already has this caretaker's heart for other people. And it's like, if she can lead and help other women come into orthodoxy, because yeah, that is, that is something that is, is missing in this sphere. I think of um, a, a strong woman who understands what it's like to be in a loving and supporting relationship, but, and with the framework and the context of orthodoxy um, mm -hmm. as like being out there in the public sphere, right? There's tons of women yeah. that are total badasses that exist all over the place. But um, in the public sphere talking about this, I, I don't think that I've seen that. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off the, just read this conclusion kind of a bit. And I would just suggest to people too, this is a great book, this. And then um, why can't I remember the the heart book by Father Seraphim, St. Seraphim? The... Um, uh, I God's revelation to yeah, the, human. the human heart. I don't know why it, it just sticks. Sometimes my brain gets stuck, but I'm going to, I'm going to read here. Um, this is just a few paragraphs. So uh, this was kind of uh, what they were saying, what uh, St. Seraphim said at the end of the book against the powerful religious experience, true Orthodox Christians must now arm themselves in earnest, becoming fully conscious of what Orthodox Christianity is and how its goal is different from that of all other religions, Christian or non-Christian. Orthodox Christians, hold fast to the grace which you have. Never let it become a matter of habit. Never measure it by merely human standards or expect it to be logical or comprehensible to those who understand nothing higher than what is human or who think to obtain the grace of the Holy Spirit is some other way than that which the one Church of Christ has handed down to us. True orthodoxy by its very nature must seem totally out of place in these demonic times. A dwindling minority of the despised and foolish in the midst of religious revival inspired by another kind of spirit. But let us take comfort from the certain words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's Luke 12, 32. And then one last paragraph. Let all true Orthodox Christians strengthen themselves for the battle ahead, never forgetting that in Christ the victory is always ours. He has promised that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church, Matthew 16, 18. And for the sake of the elect, he will cut short the days of the last great tribulation, Matthew 24, 22. And in the midst, if God be for us, who can be against us, Romans 8, 31. Even in the midst of the cruelest temptations, we are commanded to be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. And lastly, let us live even as true Christians of all times have lived in the expectation of the end of all things and the coming of our dear Savior. For he that giveth testimony of these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And that's from uh, Revelations 22, 20. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, thanks, guys, man. This has been a, a great talk and I hope uh, more talks to come and I look forward uh, to uh, to those talks. <laughs> Same, yeah, man. And for that other book, it's uh, God's Revelation to the Human Heart. I don't know if you already mentioned it, but yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, and it's a small book, too. It's mm -hmm. something you can easily read in an afternoon. And it's you, Have you read it? It's like read, it, read it. And then also there's a recording of that. That's a transcript of a lecture he gave. Yes. So you can listen to 
it's sometimes it's a hard recording, but it's been remastered to where you can yeah. understand, especially if you've got headphones on. Um, but you can actually hear his own voice, which is um, powerful. Oh, <laughs> it's, sure. it's so powerful listening to his, like there's something comforting about his voice too. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish I got to meet him. <laughs> oh, for sure, man. Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's uh, there's a recording. You can get it on Spotify, I think. And then also it's on YouTube. So if you just look it up on YouTube, um, you can hear him give that lecture. And it's, it's beautiful. Awesome. Any last words, Doc? No, same thing. I, Father Seraphim in the church, I, I've been amazing and it's like and uh and coming from like the the veteran community it's like i if i see what it's doing with me and my family it's like i see what it can do for everyone else and even slate hearing his story it's like it's a testament to what the church and what god can do 100 percent, dude i want i want it for everybody man like i want it for everyone <laughs> i do it's so it is it's the truth i'm in, I'm in. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for uh, anybody who's left. I, have, I don't have the podcast up. Do we have anybody left there listening? Hey, we got seven left. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us, man. And yeah. uh, have a great uh, Saturday afternoon or whatever day if you're listening to this. And uh, we'll be doing some more real soon. So thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. Peace.